You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash newoldheads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Printfinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash newoldheads. You are listening and many of you are watching the New Old Heads. My name is Jay Moore and I'm filling in uh, the A-Mike duties for my man, Mike, who's, uh, you know, trying to rest up and be well so he can uh, get next to some uh, some turkey and some stuffing for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Not invited. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're going to hold it down for him and, uh, you know, just get another show off. Uh, just want to go ahead and uh, say what's up to the fellas. Uh, you know, I'm going to start with the man to my left, Longevity. How are you doing today, sir? Doing all right, Jay Moore. Thank you for asking how I'm doing. Okay, okay. Well, you know, I gotta gotta make sure we're good over here. Yeah, I'm doing. You know, doing click duties on a on a keyboard today. It's different. Yeah, yeah. We're making so, some know. technical changes, but yeah, uh, you, know. you know, change is good. Well, <laughs> I mean, we'll see if change is good by yeah. the end of the show. Yeah, we Indeed. will. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and uh, you know, over to the on uh, the on the other side of the room, my man DJ J Diff. What's really good? Salutations. Okay. Okay. Everything. I'm here, not there. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we got a special guest in the building. He is, uh, you know, a friend. You know, we'd say he's family, and uh, you know, he's uh, he's been a part of many of the things we've done here. You just never been on the show. Uh, shout out to my man, Mister Kinetic. How you doing, sir? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's a blessing to be here with y'all, cast. Man. Okay, I'm, I'm glad going we, way back, so it's good to be in the yeah, same room. Yeah, man. I'm glad you could come through in the clutch for us. You know, yeah. we, you you were a late addition, had to pull you off the bench. That's all right, though. Okay, <laughs> Robert Ory, man, he right. come in, hit a few threes. Okay, I'm not mad. Hey, yeah. man, he got what? How, what? What? Seven yeah. championships. So yep. if we if we can get a performance like that out of you, that would be very happy <laughs> no pressure no doubt no doubt not, all right not. well you know let's let's get into it you know first of all is there anything you know outside of the topics you know that we've uh, kind of all voted on that you might have seen something we might have missed you know and trying to put things together for the show uh that you just kind of you know kind of struck your fancy or made you say hmm i stole that from arsenio there you go hmm. no nah, i've seen the the what's going on online is a lot of people are mad that boosie wants to get paid for being sampled and I mean, that's that's one of the, the things about music, right? If, if somebody samples you and it's blatant, obviously, mm -hmm. that you sampled this man, then he's supposed to get paid for it. Uh, this does not fall in the line of snitching. Like some people were saying, this man has has made a living off his raps. So if if I take something verbatim from you, I should be paid with no problem. What's and, the uh, what's the premise of this? Like, what's it? You know so, I mean? Rod Wave used pretty much a whole verse and song title from Boosie. Mm, yeah, it was pretty blatant. It is blatant. He should be paid. I mean, it's, it's really cut and dry. It's weird that people have these back and forths online about people based on them being a fan of them and thinking that he's just paying homage and he shouldn't have to do this, that, and the other. He shouldn't have to pay him. He should be happy. No, it doesn't work that way. This is a business. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, people are mad that Boosie is running a business and wants to get paid for his contribution to the song. So that's what I saw. Yeah. I don't know if y'all want to talk about that. Talk about sampling as a whole. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you at, the, at a certain point, you know, we don't need, you know, as artists, we don't need you to pay homage. We need you to pay right. on them splits. Uh, and we need you to go ahead and break off a piece of that publishing, you know, especially, you know, it's not my thing, if you will. But Rod Wave is very popular. He is. And, you know, so that his music streams well. And if he took it's, it, you know, and there's always been that thing. It was like, oh, if you scratch somebody's voice, you know, because DJ Premier used to do that a lot. And, you know, there'd be people who would take it as like, oh, that's dope. But there's some people be like, so what's up with that songwriting? So it really does depend. But like Rod Wave took a nice big chunk out of a, of a Boosie song. So this isn't like something that you could ignore. It's it, not the first time either. Did he just spit his verse or like what was the? It's the whole chorus from this Boosie song. So, the exact so he took a Boosie chorus him. and put it on his. Cut put it the on check. his and yeah. called yeah, exactly. it the same thing that Boosie song is called. Mm. Cut the check. Come on, man. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cut and dry, right? This isn't. Yeah, this isn't. This isn't like one of those situations <laughs> where like, um, you know, like it's an old song from a long time ago. It's it's Again, an older like, song. Like it's an older Boosie song. Yeah, right? older. Boosie no, no, no. Song. What I'm saying is it's not like. Sampling has changed throughout the years, right? right? Right. And the way that sampling that you can sample now, like all the knowledge is out there to know that like if you use somebody's stuff, you have to reach out to them. Like way, way back then when sampling was a little bit more mysterious, shouts yeah. to Tyler, Tyler. and uh, Khaled, but uh, you know, it's different. <laughs> but, but now it's like, not like if you're going to use somebody's entire thing, 
and you have access to, and you're a big artist. Like you're literally stealing. Like that's, there's not even really, it's literally stealing. It's called Long Journey. Long Journey? So Boosie had a song called Long Journey and Rod Wave has sampled that song verbatim. Cut the check. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the thing is, I'm not sure if he was just trying to be funny, but, or he's like, he's like, I'm coming after everybody because he has a song called Who Do You Love? And then he's like, YG has a song called Who Do You Love? <laughs> yeah. Now, he's mind like, you. I need all my bread. It doesn't really. <laughs> Boosie Wild, though. You know, yeah. it's just, it's not like he's, you know, <clears throat> taking lyrics. There's no melody. There's, it, it shares no musical elements. But, you know, because then, you know, um, Bernard Wright's people could be like, Hey, I had a song called Who Do You Love in the 80s? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, as far as song titles and right. what you say in a chorus, that's different. But when you're actually lifting someone's voice and, you know, a, a section of their lyrics and it's like, OK, just cut the check, man. Wait, Especially time out. It's, it's from the direct original recording? That's what it sounded like to me. Or I don't know. I, yeah. Like, like I said, if you I, listen to both songs, I mean, of course, Boosie's in, in Boosie's voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's verbatim. Like, like it's everything same. that he's saying is the exact same and even titled the song the exact same, too. And it's yeah. like, why not call Bootsy? He should have. Yeah. Well, now they're saying <laughs> they're Bootsy, saying, but, you know, <laughs> they're saying that he didn't own the song or something or another. I don't know. But it's funny. Bootsy was still what? Warner Brothers. Warner. They're okay. saying Warner. But it's funny because the when he first said, well, Bootsy brought up, I'm going to need y'all to pay me. Rod Wade made a video like, hey, you don't got to sue me. Just pull up. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure something out. And now it's turning into, well, you didn't own it in the first place and blah, blah, blah. But nobody got paid for it. Oh. So somebody needs it's to a whole get lot paid, wrong, right? Man. Even yeah. if he doesn't own it, if Warner owns it and you sampled it, you still got to pay Warner, somebody. Now Warner's like, oh, where's say, our check? Yeah, they're getting yeah. ready to get involved. And that's I know who I pay, guys. Yeah. Search Life Publishers. That's yeah. right. It's, Multinational, it's, man. They're going to be... They gonna get their money. They definitely yeah. gonna get their money if Boosie don't get his. But Boosie was uh upset because he's like, y'all don't do this to P and Jay Z and this that and the other, and y'all think y'all can do it to me. I'm like, well, I mean, why not calling for the feature? Yeah, that's right. Right. on a remix. Yeah. yeah, but that's an old era hopping on the remix. Yeah, so they don't do that no more. Yeah, they don't. They don't do that. Like <clears throat> Melissa Morgan hopping on um uh the Jay Z record. Yep. You know, after I mean, it actually took the tune. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 for um, yeah, Fool's uh, Paradise. Fool's Paradise. Mm. Can't Knock the Hustle. Yeah, right? Can't Knock the Hustle remix. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that's a hell of a reach that you went to that. I, that I, I don't know why. And that's the that's first impressive. one that came to my mind. I love it. That speaks to my heart, though. That's how I <laughs> think No, that speaks stuff. to my age. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, I don't. Boosie's not wrong. I mean, Boosie speaks from his heart on a regular basis. Some, and sometimes he says some stuff that's wild, but he's not wrong here. He's not. And that's, that's why it's out of pocket for people to think. Because they, they call everything clout chasing. Okay, uh, gentlemen, we had a um, album come out that everyone seems to have an opinion uh -huh. on, whether they know exactly what the genre or the specifics of said artistic expression are, and that is by our good friend from Atlanta, Andre Benjamin. Many of you know him as Andre 3000. Uh, he put out an album of instrumental flute music. Yeah. Some of it flute music, some of it some... I call it soundscapes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And um, everybody's got an opinion. And that's fine because, hey, music is to uh, be judged by people's um, experiences and sometimes, you know, just their lack of musical <laughs> knowledge. Um, but that's fine. Just going to put it out to the I'm, I'm going to talk to you, Kinetic, because you know what I saw? You posted, hey, if you are into this, here are some other things that you might be into. So, yeah, sure. you know, and I know, you know, you're, you're a musician, you know, a DJ a vocalist, <laughs> a producer. So what did you think of the project? And an educator. Exactly. You know, I, I like it, but I also listen to a lot of stuff like that. Okay. So it, it's not the best thing I've heard in that genre, but I like it. I mean, I don't really know why people are making a whole lot out of it. I mean, I, I think a lot of it has to do with this is not what I want him to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And so there's, all right, so I think like everybody, big artists, they all got an album. So like Stevie Wonder got Journey in the Secret Life of Plants. People don't, People act like they don't like that, even though it's got Send One Your Love on it. So I don't really know the issue in Power Flower. But Marvin Gaye's got Hear My Dear. People don't like people that. People don't like that. Yeah, yeah, it's not what they wanted him to do. I'm trying to think of some other people that got that one album. It's like, this is not what well, I asked Andre, for. Well, Andre has The Love Below. Yeah. You know, if you yeah, think I, about so it. So I'm old enough to remember people didn't like it. Exactly. Yeah. See, this is a very interesting conversation because people act, oh, we loved it. Uh-uh, I was around. Mm -hmm. I bought that. And I, I remember, remember people going, telling me it was trash. Listen, yeah. I remember Rusty specifically telling me when I went to Rock and Billy that the heads are not going to like this when mm. I bought that album from there. And he was right. Yeah. 
I'm I I'm glad even I would say even stank on you. I know some people that didn't like that. I thought um, it was straight. Mm. I didn't I like know a lot of people didn't like AT Aliens. Yeah. He's always they've always been kind of polarizing. Yeah, yep. that's true. Even speaker box. I know people didn't like that. Now nah, I I don't mind that. There's some stuff on there I don't want to listen to. But I, I mean, didn't. It's got a weird Jay Z sample, like a Jay Z feature, <laughs> feature with yeah. with Killer Mike. I'm like, what was like flip flop rock? Yeah, yeah. Young Hov in the place to be, big mm. boy in the place. Could have kept be. that one. You didn't <laughs> like that. <Mm-mm>. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I haven't listened to that song since it probably came out. Oh man, when I listen to that album, I listen to both both parts of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. But anyway, like the, I don't I don't have a problem with it at all. I think that as an artist, you should put the music out that you feel comfortable with, and if he felt comfortable with doing that, that's what he should put out. The now, end. Now I have heard, I've heard that this ain't it though. I've heard mm. there's, I've heard there's a rap album floating around. Well, I mean, that's what that's Killer what Mike heard. said. He heard eight minutes of raps from Andre. Why is the button not working? <laughs> no, I thought that was uh no um Charlemagne. Uh, Charlemagne said that. Nah, Killer Mike said. Remember he came. No, out, that's right. He, yeah, he came yeah. out early. Yeah, yeah. and okay. he was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say anything. And then oh, yeah. so I actually brought it up to i think it was major last week i was like is this the album that killer mike was talking about maybe he just like pulled like oh okay you're gonna get a flute album now you know uh, you know (laughs) but uh yeah i don't know yeah that even makes me think about oh man not everybody loved miles when he went electric Mm. not everybody loved herbie hancock when he did that absolutely not yeah i mean there's everybody's got an album that like that whole miles uh hip-hop era was trash oh the stuff he was doing with uh easy moby yeah Yeah, that was not good yeah i didn't like he (laughs) he got criticized for the stuff he did with marcus miller too though Hmm. where like was human nature on that record and uh he did the cover time after time yeah i mean it's just here's what will probably happen 10 years will go by and a bunch of people say how great it is the same people that didn't like it i mean like away from andre 3000 I don't know how it's aged yeah. in other people's eyes, but like I know I loved um, Alexis Alexis Circus, Circus. and I just oh, know man. I liked people. it when it came out. Yeah, I liked it when it came out. It was hard for me to get with when it came and out. And plus, mm-hmm. I saw the Electric Circus tour. Okay, that probably would do something and different. That when you see the tour, it, it was something <clears throat> about that. that Is that made the joint with Come Close on there? Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's on there. Oh, now see, I like that record. Come Close. But that I was, got a right. That record but, was but, probably the most normal record. Come on Close there, was the yeah. most normal. That, you know, to be honest, I, I always say that Come Close didn't fit the album in comparison yeah, to no, everything it else. Is that Especially the same album leading up the, to an album that 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 you're loose to hearing Come in yeah. a certain way, and you hear it like that. But yeah, I mean, didn't that have a joint with Macy Gray? Yes. That on there? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, yeah, he had. Well, I Electric mean, because wire. I gotta yeah. go back and listen to it, man. It's yeah, been a you while. Do. You do. It's, uh, to be honest, I've always, I've always held this stance, but I did go back and listen to it maybe about five years ago, and I would say that it didn't hold up as well as I thought it had. Still had the records that I thought were really, really strong mm-hmm. were still really strong, but it had, a, it had a few on there. I was like, eh, yeah, nah, yeah. maybe yeah. not. Maybe not. Not like like Water for Chocolate. Yeah, or I mean, it's, or, it was hard because yeah. a lot of us wanted like Water for Chocolate too. Yeah. Yep. That's like people want Andre to rap. Yep. Yeah. Because but, even Love Below, people were, yeah, you remember people were, weren't really in love to how much he was not rapping listen, on that album. Out of those two, I preferred to Love Below. Oh, yeah. From the very beginning. Obviously. Same. So, me personally, Andre playing a flute on an album is not really far-fetched in my personal opinion. Nah. This is... Total Andre behavior. I mean, he had on a, a Braves jersey on the first album, yep. a turban on the second. Yep. There was a painting of him uh, in like a 70s mm-hmm. shirt, chest out. And he had the shoulder pads on. Then he had shoulder pads yeah, like, and, yeah. and uh, like furry boots. Yeah, mascot boots on. Yep. So this is not out of the ordinary then for, he had a for him to go left Stank field. Coney, he had a little perm. You know what I'm saying? So fresh, so clean. With, a, with a knit scarf and yep. a knit hat and, yep. and no shirt and tattoos. So I mean, this this is kind of, yeah. kind of par for the course for Andre. Well, well, even like to to tag on that with Love Below. I mean, there's a cover of Favorite Things on there. Come on, like, man! It's most random. Yeah, and super. I random. liked it too. And yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I think he just programmed the drums. I don't know if he did anything he else. Sped on that it record. up super fast. Yeah, I mean, oh, there's there's so many albums, so many songs on there that should have let people know. That like, he was alluding to playing yeah. the flute. Like Pink and Blue at the end got that whole just orchestral part yeah, just man. at the end of like, I don't know. I guess it would tell me how much of a fan you are, how much of a problem you have with it. I don't know. Yeah, and because I'm I'm like Andre's like top five MC to me. Yeah. So think- I'm not listening to this album in the same vein that I'm listening to him spit anything. Right. This is this is just an, an album that an artist put out. He decided he wanted to play the flute. Like you said, it to you it sounds like soundscapes. 
To me, it's, it's almost like binary beats, uh, oh, something yeah. that you kind of just put playing the background, going about your day. You might that's kind of where come was... up with some. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, soundtrack, soundtrack music, like like um. The same for the yeah. gym. Nah, <laughs> no, it, could, it could be though. I played it in the car for like however long it is. I, I don't know. It was nice just driving down the freeway, and that yeah. was what I was listening yeah. to. It okay. was cool. After a while. It was just on. Like I just wasn't really paying that close. Of and I think that's to it. that was kind of the intent but, of it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, what we keep alluding to is that Andre is an artist. Yeah. You know, and and he's more than just like an MC. And I, you know, obviously, it also I think speaks to the fact that we all, or many of us, and even a lot more people that are willing to admit it, are really big fans of him as a rapper. Yeah. Even though there are a lot of people that like to say he's weird and, you know, he's not doing this or he's what I, I don't really care about that. Right. But at the same time, I think it kind of further drives the point home that he is an amazing MC that people mm -hmm. really do want to hear from. Yeah. Um, but I, I made a video on this. I didn't know if we I figured we we're probably going to talk about it, but I don't. Um, he's an artist, man. He can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Uh, that's that's really the brass tacks. Of it. That's what it comes down to for me. Like, um, I thought it was OK. I, I didn't think the album was super spectacular. Um, well, this is coming from somebody that listens to things of that nature. For sure. For sure. You know? Yeah, I thought it was like, a, I thought yeah, it was a five yeah. or six out of 10. I didn't think it was horrible. <laughs> you know, maybe on the higher end, more of a six. Uh, I, I really like the soundscaping. I like the soundtracking. I feel like he was really kind of sculpting an entire type of like uh, experience listening to where like you could listen to it and you can almost put yourself into mm -hmm. it. So I, I, I appreciated that aspect of it. His flute playing, I honestly didn't really like his flute playing all that much. It's interesting. Yeah. I think he was um, okay. Doing I'm something. glad somebody said yeah. that. It's I think got he was some Ornette Coleman kind of Albert Ayler. It like, does have some Ornette Coleman. Some, in it. Like you can kind of like you can do whatever you want. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. So it was. It, There's a market for that, I guess. He was pretty much like not to say scatting, but mm. just kind of in the moment, he was just improv, yeah. doing whatever there's he wanted. A lot of, to do. There's a yeah. lot of improv yeah. on there. Well, on the GQ interview, he said all of it is. Oh, yeah. for real? Yeah, he said it was. It's worth watching. It's a video. I've seen clips like of it. Hour. It's yeah. so worth watching. Yeah, he gets into a lot more than just that. But yeah, he was just like I, we would just go in and just do stuff, and then he would take whatever. Know. So I, I, I watched a couple. And you can tell. Uh, mm -hmm. You can tell. And I think that from 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 me, from my perspective, is I felt like the project would have been a little better if it was maybe a li had a little bit more intention behind it. But I also feel at the same time that this is probably what he was going for. So it's it like probably one of those, was the it's one intention. Of, though. It's one of those things. So like but it took me back to when I was in high school and I was in jazz bands and I had improvs and I was, you know, soloing, you know, you. If you've never like played an instrument and then you you've seen on the on the sheet where it just says improv for like 34 bars, right? <laughs> and then you just have to make something up. It, it reminded me of that time when I had it, but what I didn't realize at the time, and I understand that he's playing with he's uh that you don't have to follow the rules, but at the same time, one thing that I remember not knowing back then is that even though I'm improving, you still have to be within the key of what everything is happening, mm. going on with the improving. And when I'm listening to him play the flute, sometimes he's hitting that sharp. And I'm just kind of like, I understand that there's a sect of people that are be like, oh, I like the fact that he did this sharp here. But at the same time, I'm like, no, nah, like you're, you're out of key there. Like, and it doesn't even feel like a substitution. No. It doesn't feel like it. So. It doesn't feel like he, from an artistic standpoint, it doesn't feel like he even not like knew. Which well, there's I mean, a market for that. Yeah. That's that what I mean. Like tonal kind of. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and just not say really he, my thing, but that atonal or or that Coleman kind yeah. of free jazz vibe. He hasn't had any any professional training on flute. Nah, <laughs> clearly not. Yeah, I mean I, I'm not hating. That's I'm not, not hating. Nah, he's doing it's noodling he's do, the he's whole doing, time. He's yeah. doing his thing, and I'm not mad at him. Parts of it I really liked. All of us had recorders, and we were walking around the house doing the exact same thing. <laughs> well, that was like the very first track where he was just like going do 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 do. I'm like, that's all. Awesome. There's some spots where he repeats some themes though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, well, that's actually kind of dope. Yeah, I, I saw the theme. But what I can't tell. Is that is he repeating that or did they loop that? I think they looped it. That could be mm, possible. Yeah, I, I think it was too. programmed. Yeah, I, there's I, some parts I can't tell. So. I, yeah, I feel like because I because I I heard those as well and I was like I feel like they just took those elements <clears> and <throat> just kind of copy and pasted yeah. them over. But plus, I guess the guy that helped produce him, he like makes stuff that's just out there like that anyway. So yeah. all of it. He's a, I, I don't know. It all makes sense. He's to affiliated me with Brain Feeder and Flying right. Lotus, and, mm -hmm. and I think oh, yeah, it's leftover records. Or I think yeah, that's that's definitely around. Yeah. So I mean, I guess ultimately. Like I said, I mean, everybody, everybody big got that album or period where they like, you look back and like, I don't really know what was going on. I mean, I know some people like Electric Miles, but like, 
I wasn't a I don't fan know, of In it. a Silent Way and uh, the Jack Johnson album and yeah. Big Fun. A lot of that stuff is live evil. That stuff is odd. Yeah. In spots. And it's just real odd. Yeah. Um, it's no, I mean, they're, 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 they're really kind of. There's think- parts where it's like it, the tension of it is yeah, just yeah. too much for me. Mm. Um, but some people love it. You know, same like with Ornette Coleman. I keep mentioning it, but some people liked Ornette Coleman. I don't. I guess I hope that it would make people go listen to stuff like G. Huerco. Man, there's just a lot of people in that weird kind of ambient. Hopefully people will get into that. It, it kind of goes to speak to yeah. what people are comfortable listening to as Absolutely. well. Because a lot of people were going into this trying to hear it as a hip hop album. And that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Nah. This, this has nothing to do. Well, I can't say it has nothing to do with because, I mean, there's elements of hip hop sure. involved in it as a lot of other things. But this is not a hip hop album. And if if you, you're not hip or had never had the ear to hear that type of thing or those type of sounds together a certain palette then you're not going to enjoy it. like you said palette so like that's kind of like food yeah. if 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 you have this this certain delicacy that everybody messes with and your taste buds haven't achieved that level then you're not going to enjoy it or maybe they're and just not okay. even and maybe and they're just okay. not, maybe they're just not capable of it and that and like you said there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing you wrong know? with that and that's okay but, i but, wish more people had that attitude and saying instead of saying it's trash yeah, yeah. like it's cool i mean you don't like it it's cool you know yeah. whatever Look, like I, you mentioned rod wave i don't i, I yeah. don't get it i don't listen it, to rod wave but yeah. i ain't gonna tell you it's whack yeah. Look, I, 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 you know, I, I admire. Unless I listen to it, and then it um, is whack. Hey, I mean, I mean you know, it, it could be that too. It could be. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I have, I, I, this is what I really admire about Andre Three Thousand at this point in his career, is that he has made a concerted effort to not be a product, but to be an artist. Yep. Because he has that luxury. I feel the same way about Nas. Nas is not worried, you know, with all the re- the the six records that he put out basically in the last two and a half three years. Mm-hmm. There was nothing where he was like, okay, this is going to be my single for the radio. This is going to hit the strip clubs. I got, I'm doing this for Down South. He's like, I'm putting records out. Yeah, you I'm can a- say the same thing about Big Boy, too, actually. Same. Oh, he definitely. He's been quietly putting out all kind of records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and I- just doing it. Now, they have the luxury to do this because they've already sold millions of records. Yeah, for sure. You know, they've already pulled in millions of dollars in tour money. <clears throat> I understand why it's, you know, yeah. asking a younger artist to be able to do the same thing is such a risk. Yep. But at the same time, I think that's what a certain level of success buys you. You can go ahead and say, okay, yes, I am no longer a product of the machine. I'm going to go ahead and just create art at my pace yep. and do the things that I want to hear or the things that I want that, that truly uh, are a part of my soul, if you will. Yep. And just because... There's no, there's no single there. I'm not going to let that stop me. And, and there, you know, we're in a situation where in digital dis- distribution where it's not like, it's like, well, <clears throat> we don't have a single that's working. You know, there's something now because they're not rapping to eat. I say this to about a lot of artists that we talk about here. Yeah. They're not rapping to eat. Or playing the flute to eat. Well, playing it, the flute It goes to back to kind of what we were, we were talking about last week with uh, the, the conversation with Little Yachty saying that hip hop is in a terrible place mm-hmm. and him saying that everybody's safe right now like popular music is safe and that kind of goes to the same thing like doing things specifically because you have to reach a specific outcome as opposed to doing something because you're like i want to try and see what this is going to do andre could have very easily in this in this in this particular uh project put out raps and done well right in that aspect and had a whole bunch of people praise him in the same way that drake put out I don't want to go two sides sidestep here, but the, in the same way Drake put out his album and it commercially did super well, but he could have also just put out those six rap al- or records that he just hey, put out them six that people wanted anyways, um, and kind of achieved. Now I'm out of touch. I don't even know what y'all talking about. He put out. He put, yeah. out, he put out a six pack. Uh, I've or added, he he added like a maxi single the, or something. We, he like added ADP. like scary hour. He called it scary hour. So he pretty much added six more tracks to. Oh. The For All the Dogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. That fits the title of For All the Dogs. Like he's rapping. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He's not these like, songs are for the dogs. Man, they he are. should just rap, but that's a whole different yeah. thing. It's just whatever. So I guess I guess <laughs> I guess so I guess that kind of goes into what I'm saying. Uh, the long way around to get to it is yeah. Drake could very easily just put out all rap records and do super fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he is playing the safe model and the safe role. He knows he's what's been, going to work. He's been and doing he does it. that every single time. Every he's like, time. I'm going to do this because I know that if I do this, 
I can sell all these records here. If I do the raps, well, only this certain kind of core of type uh, people are going to mess with it. What heck's and I don't even know if that's even really the case. I don't either because honestly, I think everybody I, feels the same way about these six tracks. It's almost like we're surprised that he did it. I'm, and I know we're talking about Dre here, but we're talking about an elite MC. If Dre was rapping, he's an elite MC. For sure. So if somebody's following in Dre's footsteps, those six songs that Drake dropped are along those lines. It's, it's almost like they put a battery in his back when they was like, man, you really Just ain't rapping. Button, man. And then J. Cole really thrashed you on the track. So he was like, I got to give you six more after he said he quit. Yeah, because he said, I'm going to take a hiatus. And then was like, mm, Yeah, he even not. addressed that okay. on here. Like, I ain't done. This is, I ain't done. I, I, I got to keep going pretty much. It. I'm not mad at that at all. But um, hey, if Dre is, is is playing with us like Snoop did, saying he quit smoking, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I knew with, something I'm with all right the smoke. I'm I, was with like, all yeah. the, I was like, this feels like a rollout. Yes. Yeah. The, the other hate. part about all of that is, honestly, if you want to hear Andre rap, he's got lots of material. Listen to it. Hey. You know, yeah. like even a verse that I, maybe people didn't hear it or don't talk about it, the verse he has on the Killer Mike record, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we talked about that extensively. Yeah. He got a joint with... Um, there's a record that he had with Travis Scott back on, like the the record with Goosebumps on yep. it. I like that verse. Yeah. Um, he got what else was he that on? That Kanye r- record he did. Who? He did a record. Oh uh, yeah, on Kanye. Yeah. Who? Exactly. Mm. On the Donda. Who? Oh, I didn't listen to. Sorry, Donda. I, I you didn't it. hear the Dre track. Nah, I made it like two or three oh songs. Oh my god! Like, yeah, no, the Donda got like that. That listen. song wound up coming out later. It, it felt was like added a, on man. It listen. felt like the the beginning part of a thriller like action movie that was not that great kind of maybe I didn't like any of it so you need to listen to to that track I would go do that though I know West Side Gun is on there too I like it because Uh, Andre's on it but that's it you know yeah I mean I well, like, that song oh then spoke. he's on the Tribe Called Quest that last album that came I mean Andre yeah. got ver- man just go verses. listen to Outkast records if yeah. you want to hear him rap yeah he don't owe us nothing exactly nah, he, he really don't exactly hell the honestly the song that he gave me on on that Kanye he could have been done he, that, rapping I'm sorry that's me. one of my favorite ver- I mean I don't know yeah, it's you give to me it spoke to me I trust y'all I got that it was a real good record yeah I remixed it I remember that and they came it was like no did they hit you for it man I remixed that like in dropped it the next day i had like twenty five thousand views in like they two, said, two hours they said no no and then, whoosh, but this is the crazy ain't that thing. a good feeling no <laughs> yeah no because every time like i have something that's ready to just go it's just kind of like oh no you don't just mm. put it on sound click or something i bet it'll probably the numbers ain't gonna do the same blinker or something like that yeah, i don't <laughs> even know sound clicks even around anymore <laughs> I have, I still you said sound account. click I we got like, dropped from the label what sound, sound click, click. Mm. no but <laughs> the, th- the thing is he put it out when the song wasn't officially out. Oh, you was ahead of the game. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. no, I think no, Kanye had to double back and, and end remember up adding Con- it to the remember release. Remember, Kanye's verse is completely different on... Oh. Because that's when he's it's rapping. because he got washed, probably. Well, because that's why he's, that's because on the first first one he's rapping about gang banging and and all this. Other I don't stuff. think he even wrote that verse. I doubt he did. Yeah. I don't care, man. About who Kanye. would be his ghostwriter if he got one? Now, Sci High. Not anymore. Do you think? Uh. Mm. Sci High was for a while. Push Push a T at one point. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. That's a great question. If it had to be somebody right now, it might be Rod Wave. Stop. Yeah. You know what I I, I do? <laughs> I brought this up. Cheers I said, to the callback. With uh, exactly. <laughs> That's how um, you pod. One yeah. of, one of the things that I you know we talked about on many many pods ago is like, look man, I don't want to have to you know people say, man, if you were just on you know smoking a little weed or you was on some pills, man, I, this album would be incredible. I don't want to have to do that, and I don't want to have to do all that. Hey, no. <laughs> that Dre soundtrack is. But I'm telling you, mushroom music. I, I'm telling you, if if <laughs> if, if I was. Somewhere where um, marijuana is Mm -hmm. is legal and I was enjoying uh, some smoke during a rainstorm. This would probably be the best album I've ever The Andre album? album? Yeah. Yeah, that Andre album is is definitely a a hallucinogenic (laughs) album. If, if, If that's your drug of choice. You decide that you want to trip off some mushrooms. Well, if, if, <laughs> hey, in, a or place, in a place like Portland where it's, or it's legal. Co- or Colorado. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Or if you're just trying trip. to chill. And, yeah. I fell asleep to the album the first time I For heard sure. it, which some people would interpret that as a bad thing. But no, no, no. I, no, think I that's got awesome. that relaxed. And I went to sleep and I woke up. It was on the last record. Yeah, not, yeah. not everything's supposed to make you like 
turn nah, up. Nah, you know nah. What I mean? People got it. I don't know. That's a whole. Oh like I God. said, I listen to a lot of stuff like that anyway because I get tired of hearing other people's voices. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. just to just to be a hundred percent real, I get tired of humans. And it's also at the uh, yeah. the uh, is it four thirty two? Yeah, it's yeah. at the, it's at that megahertz where it feels it's, it's relaxing yeah. and it feels good yeah. and it, it makes you vibrate for yeah. lack of better words. Different yeah. vibration it resonate yeah. with all that water in mm-hmm. your body. A lot of a lot of people are not ready. You know, they're on a they're low not vibration. Ready for that. They're they not ain't ready, my brother. You know, it's not. It's hitting your pineal gland. That's different. Hey man, decalcifying that mug. Stay woke. You got to stay woke, my Straight brother. Up. Yeah. Right. Up. Don't be out here playing these reindeer games. <laughs> yeah, Word don't do life. that. Straight up. <laughs> Thanks to our partners. Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go-to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J. Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. So, so Joe Budden responds to Backlash after removing a Diddy Cassie podcast segment. Now, I'm not familiar with this at all. Is anybody? I can read some of this, uh, but if, mm. I'm I, not. I'm familiar with him speaking on pretty much saying it shouldn't have to address it. Okay, that Puff shouldn't have to address no, it. No, that Joe Budden, should, as a someone on a podcast, I mean, yeah. saying that he shouldn't have to address it just because. And I get that. Just because he has a platform? Right. Nah, he, ain't got, he can talk about whatever he wants to talk about. Yeah. There you go. Well, let me, let me go Also, ahead. we don't always need to hear what everybody got to say about it. Absolutely. 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 Let's ask Ja Rule what he thinks. Ja Rule. Like, no, we don't care. Yeah. He is the pinnacle. <laughs> so let's go ahead and read some of this you know here. So well, This is an article from Hip Hop DX. So Joe Budden has addressed the online backlash after he removed a segment of his podcast that dealt with the Diddy Cassie lawsuit. Last week, Cassie filed a lawsuit against Bad Boy Records founder, accusing him of yeah, a lot. The R word and so the many and, and DA and yeah. during their de- decade uh, long relationship, Diddy has denied all accusations since and settled the suit with the singer shortly before the re- release of the pod. Uh, excuse me, the latest episode of the Joe Budden podcast, which aired exclusively on Patreon over the weekend. Budden went on Instagram Live and said he had to do some last minute editing while alluding to the legal drama between the former couple. "Quote: I had to do a little bit of editing because y'all almost got me." Y'all almost got me to be the only voice out here saying some ish. Nah, them blogs would have had a field day with that podcast this morning. Somebody nope. got it. So he added, sometimes you got to protect your piece and your co-host piece. I ain't playing with y'all. So Budden did address the lawsuit on the podcast, but skirted around saying anything directly about Diddy or Cassie. Instead of commenting, I don't feel like I need to come here. Uh, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Instead, commenting, I don't feel like I need to come in here and have word vomit about my discernment when it comes to evil-ish in the industry. Okay. So. He kind of says something right yeah, there. Yeah, that makes sense. He kind of did. Uh, so the question that I guess was posed here in general, uh, <laughs> does Joe Budden and people that talk about this stuff have a responsibility to talk about this stuff as opposed to just ignore it? No. Nah, this kind of goes back to the conversation we had about Drake and Khaled addressing the uh, Palestine and uh, Jewish situation going on. Not necessarily. I mean. Israel. Israel. That's what I meant. You don't have a responsibility that you have to talk about what's going on now. No. Now, it would be nice with you being from that background if you did have something to say that was of value. All right, add it to add it to the conversation, but I don't I don't feel like anybody has to say anything when it involves these type of situations because sometimes saying nothing is the right thing to say because nobody's going to agree with you out 100% anyway regardless of what you say. Right. Plus, it, hopefully, people are not looking to him to help form an opinion. For right. sure. I mean, that's no disrespect to Joe Budden. Well, that like, should be know, the way. That Mr. should pump it up himself. But that should be how it is, really, but, across the board. Yeah, the man. I'm be, I don't care what he got to say about a right. lot of stuff, man. Like, I, I agree with him. Like, he, he don't want to talk about it. He don't want nobody to know what he thinks. All right, bet. You know, <clears throat> that's fine. You know, the only thing I can say. I mean, there's a lot of things I can say, you know, but mm-hmm. the only reason I, I you know, cause someone's at, I've had multiple people ask me, are y'all going to talk about this case on the show? Ooh. The only reason I want to talk about it is in the case of how it affects podcasters, because that's what we do. Right. Because other than that, I, we don't do really celebrity gossip. And plus, grand opening, grand closing on this whole thing. Right. Yeah, real quick, you know, um, real, real quick. Sometimes there are things, like I said, there's a reason why we we shoot this show for two hours and only put out an hour show because Facts. everything that we put, everything that we say isn't really, yeah. we want it to be a part of the permanent record, if you will. Right. Um, 
You know, the only so thing. So if I, you want to be a part of that, you know what to do. Yeah. yeah. You watch you it live on the summer or, screen. <laughs> subscribe on Patreon. Subscribe, Patreon. subscribe on Patreon. You, you get can get whole, all the uncut. Yeah, all the uncut, uh, moving cameras and saying inappropriate things. You want that, then go on. It's real players with nothing but this uncut. Yeah, so oh, yeah. exactly. Yes, sir. You know, that the only thing I will bad. say <laughs> is, you know, I, I did uh, have a chance to go through <laughs> the 35 page. Um, you read all of that? Oh, you had time? I read, a, I read a couple pages, but I've never seen a legal document. This give started you a trigger with trigger warning. warning. I don't know. And I was like, oh boy. I'm like, we getting ready to get into it. You know, and it is detailed. There's there's some parts. There's some parts where I'm like, come on now. But, detailed. You know, there are parts with that I completely believe because when you start adding up P Diddy's entire, yeah, where you're like, okay, you know, just in in the words of a uh, of one Khalid Muhammad, this is a sick Negro, <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's been that guy though without even knowing this stuff. He's been that guy. But there's some stuff I've that, never really liked Puffy. But there's yeah. some stuff in there where like just I don't shady. believe that at all. Yeah. I think this is they like they trying to run it up. Yeah, and you know, even with her settling, it was like, okay, this is just too embarrassing. You know what yeah. did it for me with Puff is when he let Shine take the hit on all that. I was done there. Yeah, yeah that, was, was, that was foul. There. That, that was, was foul. I already didn't really have, but it was, like, I didn't really care one way or another, but I remember watching that play out. I'm like, ah, yeah. I'm like. And now him and Shine are cool, rubbing elbows and stuff together, but the only thing that I don't like about this situation, because I wasn't here nor there Right. And know whatever went on with their relationship for the, those 10 years. I don't like how it was filed as a civil suit and then just you paid some money and it went away. I don't. That's what I don't like. No, I, because what yeah. it does, what it does, it puts people who really have been hurt and harmed in a weird position. Pretty much saying that if you have a certain amount of money, yeah, then that makes all that pain go away. That's no, that doesn't happen because if if some of these things that were specified in that document happened to this young lady, and I'm not saying it didn't, but uh, somebody else's experience, money's not going to make that go away. It's not going to it's not going to fix. Yeah, we talked about that at the house. And that's the only thing that I don't agree with, how this came out on Friday and it was settled on Saturday. And mm-hmm. now it's gone. It's and quick. all these all these people were, I'll uh, tell your truth, tell your story. And I'm doing, nothing- this, I'm doing this for all the other women who suffer in silence. And then in 24 hours, you're like, it's yeah, gone. It's amicable. And I bet she has an NDA. I probably know does. she has an that NDA. NDA is probably crazy. Probably does. So that means yeah. the book, the so-called book that she probably was oh, going to put out, out. it's yeah. not coming well, out. Well, because initially it was going to be a book. Yeah. And like, and they was like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm going to put this book out unless you pay me this money. It was like, you know, that's extortion. Mm-hmm. Which is a crime, and so like they yeah. had to pull back on that because she couldn't get a publisher. Listen, I mean, you make no a amount really of good, money. You make a really good point. No matter what the deal is, she got to she got to figure out how to live life exactly. after this, all of it, and who knows how. And I guess how long she had been living life with it. Anybody, so you really didn't get justice for that. Nah, anybody that knows anybody that's lived through anything like that, you know, it don't really matter. It's always going to be a thing. That it's always going to be a thing. Yeah. No matter how long, how much time passes, always it's like thing. there's there is no real restitution for it. There's nah. nothing like that. Man. He, so, he he could have gave her every dollar he has. It still ain't gonna change. You know. Right. All I know is if Which I is was sad. Cassie's one of her family members, I'd either want justice. I probably shouldn't say it. No, I'll say it. I'd either want justice, and if I can't get justice, I want blood. And hey. well, I mean that that's <laughs> some of the know, stuff that was described. If it's real, it's like yo. I know cats that have done stuff to people for less, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, a lot less, uh, a lot less. Because yeah. so, he was doing a lot. Like, yeah, street cats, they don't. You ain't got to give them nothing. They might do, you know. Come on, you know man. You just could tell them. You, you, you just could tell them what went on. You could tell just by looking at Diddy's eyes what type of person he is. Come on, man. Like I now, try to remind people, man. He a street cat, man. He from a different cut. He, cloth. His he, he daddy was, was a yeah, gangster yeah, from Harlem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come Around on, man. Around Nicky Barnes and all of that stuff. Yeah, he's a street on, guy. Man. Listen, he's a street like, guy. You know the, what's wild the too? And, and, yeah, and fool. He's a street guy. This is guy. wild because I never even thought about this until this situation happened. So everybody from the original Uptown is gone. Yep. Except for I'll be sure. And remember, he had the health scare about a year or so ago. Yep. And now he's back. And he he kind of alluded to some here recently because even Ken Porter was part of Uptown. Yep. Yeah. Because that was that was originally I'll be sure's lady. Yes. That's who forever my lady is written about. Listen. So 
there there's a lot of weird underlying things that are going on that yes. that 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 surround this character called Buddy Love. Well, that's not really Buddy Love. Uh, no, yeah, whatever he was. Brother, brother Love. love brother love, love. Is, yeah. Buddy Love ain't that from Nutty Professor? Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> we can start calling him Buddy Love now. That's cool. Buddy Love. But, buddy uh, Love with these. He's going to forever be Puffy to me. I'm not calling him yeah, nothing different. It's yeah. Puff. Listen. So there there are not a baby, lot of a lot of situations that. Uh, have happened and occurred during this man's career. Yes, that kind of add up to. Or he had Steve uh, Stout with that bottle. Yeah, these things man. being being very possible. He's questionable. But listen, you can't, you can't, and this is for anybody that's something that's going through something. Money does not make that right. Nope. But it's okay to ask for it. Well, I mean, it's the best you can get. It's exactly. Okay. That's I, like, mean, I feel you, man. Yeah. It's not like it don't. Like I mean, if you know any any family members or anybody that's been a victim of anything traumatic. The money really. Nah, because that's the only way. It. But I think the weird thing the, about the money is every time you spend it, guess what you got to think about? Yes. How you got it. Yeah. Yeah, but, but see, I'm the type of person that I'm going to figure something you. out for my people. Now, the part I'm going to say something. But at the same time, that's the only way that you that's the only way that you can. That's the only way you can really. What's your recourse? You have no other recourse. The only way you can hurt. That's it. How you can actually get. But you're not. You're not. He he settled for what? 30 million. I know. That is a a drop in the the barrel for him. The number wasn't really released. He's still like initially they said it was 30 million. It better be more than that. He's going to be up regardless of what it is, though. Ain't he like close to being a Billy? Yeah. Or net worth. I think he might be. Yeah, net. Yeah, it's a di- people net worth. Yeah, I mean, net worth. Like, net worth is different. Maybe, it's yeah. different but than what you can just pull out of. Yeah, whatever it was, it was probably like here, you know. Yeah. But I'm, and this is going to make some here. people mad. But this is talking about a lot of other situations. This is not specifically to Cassie. Uh, you know, it's crazy when all of a sudden people want to be honest, have a, a moral sense. Is when the money get low. Yeah. Because like, well, let, me, let me cook. Let me cook. <laughs> Because because all of a sudden, I, I'm not, I don't even want to go into detail about what this dude said, but apparently somebody who's in Will Smith's inner circle. Oh, decided, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, money must be running low. Mm. Right. Remember when all of a sudden uh, the uh, two little kids sat down, not one kids, but they was adults. Yeah. They sat down with Oprah talking about what Michael Jackson after yeah. Michael Jackson been dead. Oh, yeah. Money ran out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like if you're going to do or not do certain off-brand stuff around people a gene deal no money coming in gotta gotta get some attention and get some money like you better make sure you take care of these people for the rest of your life man because honestly there you look this is why i I, everyone would love to be rich but i've never aspired to be famous yeah they can keep that i don't you know i don't because the thing is fame a drug for the person who's famous but it's also a drug for the people who are around a famous person because they get the trappings of fame bestowed upon them a lot of times. But when it runs out, somebody's like, hmm, it's time for the tell-all book because money's running low. And I'm not they and searching I'm not, for that precious. Look, man, I'm just saying that everybody, man, like, <laughs> once again, everybody say, oh, I'd love to be famous. I'd love to have the spotlight on no. me. You don't want that like you think you do. Andre actually talks about that in that GQ interview to connect yeah. that. He, he talks about how he likes to be able to because it's in a laundromat and he like goes there and he right. talks about how he appreciates that he doesn't have to worry about that. Whereas like his friends can't. And I saw a story where like Eminem couldn't go to his daughter's homecoming thing or something like that. He had to sit in the classroom and watch it mm-hmm. because it would have stole the attention from, from what her. she was doing. And like, yeah, I mean, you know, and the thing is like, it'd be like Mad Lib. I would prefer that. We're like, if you know who I am, then you know who I am. But yeah. Mad Lib can probably go to Trader Joe's and ain't nobody going to say anything. Exactly. To him, you know? But in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sad thing is it, you almost don't want to know this in in this age of transparency, transparency and social media. We know too much about the people who we enjoy or we don't enjoy, because I'm telling you what, when you start to look in, when you look up some of your idols and these people that you love trash, you're like, man, like when you when you really know about Marvin Gaye and Janice years, that's why we're never going to see a Marvin Gaye bi- bio trash because he no, was you're R- right because you've seen the Elvis. Oh, but boy. yeah, but he was R. Oh, Kelly beta test. Sorry, sorry, y'all. And like, I mean, they did do the joint about James Brown, but at least they didn't shy away from the James Brown like to hit women from time to time. Oh boy, uh, I you mean, here sizzling. You didn't say cook. You ain't here. You got the Blackstone I'm, out. I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's greasy. Yeah, I ain't got the deep fry. I'm, got here. The- I'm here to pod today, y'all. So a lot of your, a lot of your heroes are trash. Uh, man. A lot of that's your heroes why they are say trash. don't meet your heroes. Yeah, don't I mean, them. I read a book from uh, I think it's Curtis Mayfield's one of his sons. Like a, <clears throat> 
somehow it's one of his sons with a different wife or whatever. Uh-huh. I don't know. His description of Curtis Mayfield and spots of his life was pretty trash, too. You don't, you, you, ain't nobody as trash as Bobby Womack. Oh, I read Bobby Womack's. The thing about his, he told you. <laughs> he told you. Yeah. His autobiography, he was, trust keep, me so he was keeping it real. He was like, he basically, he said everything but said I was a bad listen, person. Listen, he was terrible. Yeah, awful. You, yeah, but you know what? Then Horrible. you don't, then there's people you thought, oh, are completely like, these are just good artists and made good songs. Then you, you find out some stuff about Bill Withers. You're like, Bill Withers? Oh, Did you read Herbie Hancock's wow. memoir? Mm-mm. He was, he, was on, he was a cokehead for decades. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, I believe yeah. that. I mean, he's he's got, it got all the way to crack. Like he had well, to, yeah. He oh, got off wow. the plane and went to a crack house. It's crazy. Hey, man, listen. <laughs> his his memoir is great, by the way. I totally recommend it. You know whose memoir I because Miles. Know, I, Bobby Brown. This is the most yeah. honest thing I've ever Oh, I ain't never did, read you that. You know, one. did you see the Bobby Brown biopic? No. Like oh, it's Lord. not even like. Of course, you've seen some. Of like course, but like <laughs> I like I got Bobby Brown's book for Christmas one year when the year came out. This is like you could. I'm, I'm like I wouldn't have told everybody this. Did he really drop the dope bag on the stage that one time they saw Absolutely. it on camera? Yeah. Did he? Really, we all saw. Is that really what yeah. it was? Yeah. I mean, he didn't. Have what to, else could have He didn't have to put that. It in wasn't a bag of Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he was like 18, 19 then. Oh, man, and you he know. picked that up. Smooth. Real smooth. Because we forget that the that don't be oh. cruel area. He was still a teenager. Think about yeah. how hard he was dancing. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that joint come just on, come man. out. Bow. Bow. No, he, he didn't miss a step to the stage. What, 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 uh, he really was the king of stage. What Boy. what uh, uh what's the project pass say? Had to be smoking or snorting something that's to be right. up them four or five days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where he was dancing. <laughs> hey, he was dancing like his life depended on he his because his heart was beating out his chest. <laughs> Facts. Me go get me some cornflakes and like <laughs> he's like I and Roxanne pretty good if, pretty Roxanne good. Shantae was like I don't think I ever learned this woman's name because he just was like Big O to this it was the 80s and it was just like that's how he talked to people <laughs> and, and it, and it yeah. was abusive and wrong and I didn't you know I was young I didn't know what to say also street cat East Side Absolutely. Buffalo. He's, Buffalo. Hey, look, he's, from, he's from the same streets of West Side Gutter. Yeah, before. so at yes. the beginning of that documentary, Conway, drive, they drive through East Buffalo and talk about this is where he was from. Yeah. You know, they're from the same part mm-hmm. of Buffalo. He's a street cat. So I um, think people forget that a lot of times. A lot of people we really like, they street they cats. They are from, they not, they're from they the street dirt. Cats. And what, what a lot of people don't realize, too, is back then, you had to have some money to even be out here doing this. Yes. So where do you think they got the money from? Street. Mm-hmm. Listen, I mean, we love like my father is the biggest Temptations fan probably there is. Man, boy, David Ruffin, Street. like there's almost a template. Street listen, pimp for pimping since pimping been for, pimping for, for these since great pimpin artists, pimpin you know. Pimpin and listen, pimpin 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 pimpin. come on now, come on with it. I knew the Lord chose you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, assistant pimp. Yeah, <laughs> come from a long line of assistant pimps. Yeah, these, these <laughs> cats are for gaps. real out here. <laughs> they're for real out here. Indiana's own. Yeah, man, street cats. That's like that story about um, who was Ghostface telling the story about having uh, <laughs> Delphonics in the van or whatever. He was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, was a shootout. Yeah, he was, but he said they had knives with him and all of that. Yeah. But when I read Curtis Mayfield's book, he was talking about they always had guns. Uh, Maceo Parker wrote a memoir talking about James Brown. They always had guns because they might have to, you know, promoters didn't want to pay them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. So you driving through the South. I think people forget the Chitlin circuit is through the South. That's Klan yes. country. Right. So they all had that thing. With, I mean, yeah, just hey, in case it had to go down for real. Street hey. cats would have put a hole in you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Listen to my nine millimeter go bang. I'm saying. And hey, man, there, there are streets in the South, too. That's right. Yeah, dirt ones. <laughs> They pull that thirty out special, you know, thirty eight out. I'm <laughs> telling you, what a cowboy hat. Yeah, it's gonna be a whole different situation. Out there with a six shooter. That's man, right. Out, <laughs> out, there, only, out there with that. Told me you don't need but one. Listen, you know out, what you're doing. They out there with that with that bird that bird shot warning and that hey, slug to follow. That's it. You don't need but one. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Budden for uh, having some sort of edit button. Not for real, and uh, kinda, and also for putting that battery, all. putting that battery and Drake back to uh, drop these <laughs> to six do better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame him for doing that though. Sometimes you just have to weigh. Like, do I really want to get into this? I think it's nice. You saw, I don't know if you saw a yeah. Slim Thug. He waited to wait a little too deep into the water. Well, oh, they they thrashed he Slim. He should have kept his mouth closed. Yeah, he probably should have. even a fish wouldn't get caught if he kept his mouth closed. Listen, I don't know why Ooh, these people just that's that as, as Mike was saying, that's a bar. That's a yes. bar. Yeah. That's a bar, ain't it? Thanks to my grandmother, that's where I got that. You got to do it like Mike do. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, that's ooh. a bar right there. Mm. Yeah. Ha ha ha. So. That speaks to a greater <laughs> issue. I know it moving on. That speaks to a greater issue of like 
people even wanting these people to say something. Like, that's I don't what I was getting ready to, to get. Because everybody think. is nosy. Yeah, that's I what I was going. And everybody, yeah. this goes back to this, the conversation we had last week about what it takes to get on. Mm-hmm. About the whole messy. I know we didn't end up including messy, but it goes with the things that we did include. Being messy is part of the allure. Yeah. People want that. They want you to Drama. to air somebody out so that they can talk about it and and make their own little po- post and have people talking about it. it, it it's yeah. just the that's, time and place we're in right that's now. That's the one part with this Joe Budden thing where I would say the fact that he had, you know, so so often we are critical of people that don't think about that. You know, and the fact mm. that Joe did think about that and was like, you know what? No, I'm going to bow out of that. Yeah, I think, he's I think doing that's, this for a I think, that, I think that's cool. Noble. Yeah. And, I, and you know what I think it was, you know, because you can do that for clicks. Yeah, it's just like, let me stay out of that. You know, yeah. and I think, look, because there's, you know, there's this one cat I saw who broke it down and he was laughing at some of the stuff and it's not funny. No. It's not funny. Now there's like, I take that back. Was it's not funny, but there's some parts where you're like, that was okay. I can see that. But, but the thing is, I don't, if he if there's a part of that show, maybe somebody slides in a little comment and it turns into a joke. You don't want that out there. No, nah, man. You don't you want don't that need out that. There. Like I'm yeah. like I'm still kind of like tiptoeing around because I don't want no. anyone to think that I'm making light of the situation. Even I though a, I, even I though have I only a daughter. Know one side. I have a daughter, so that that kind of keeps me to the point where, and, and even before the end, I'm just saying like if somebody it's a was, different vibe though. Yeah, it's different though. It's but like even if your daughter was an adult like, and you found out any ten yeah. percent of this has happened. Yeah. You either want justice or you want blood because yeah, I well, know you. Yeah, yeah. it's a different. It's you know, like the money. Being a parent makes everything. Everything yes. you look at makes everything different because yeah. you can't help but look and think like that's somebody's kid. Like yes. you can't you can't divorce yourself from that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel you. I don't. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, like I said, I don't have level. children of my own, but I have my god kids. You know? yeah. Exactly. If anybody, but hurt you, them you like, have morals. You have a moral. Yeah. Humanity. And if yeah. I was like, if if if, <laughs> if they say not guilty in court, we go find out where he's at. Gonna be a time to kill, man. Yeah. Come on, yes, man. Yes, they deserve to die. And yes, I'll get burned in hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I understand that a thousand and ten percent. I did when I was a kid, but I, boy, I understand man, listen, now. listen, listen. You know, because that's, that's the thing. Because that's the thing. When you like, ride on my, my enemies. All my homies yeah, got man. kids. Like, yeah. if you a good father like that for real, you down to die for yours. Come die, on, die dog. Die behind if yours. It if it Come came on, to it, dog. Man, yeah. Real, real rap. Yeah. So. I love my son no to question. death, literally. Yes. Exactly. You really understand that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to life too, but to death. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. straight up. Yeah, but so. I, I don't know. I I actually respect that he was like, I'm not about to get into that. Yeah. I think it's totally fair. But we don't it's see a lot of like, that. We don't yeah, see a lot of that in the media. You don't because yeah. he could have ran the numbers. He up could talking have. About but this. like when you watch the evening news, they don't talk about certain stuff because it's just not what they talk about. Not and they have lame. enough. Yeah, they got enough journalistic, you know, integrity. Uh, integrity to be like that's just not. Like if you watch WTHR or whatever, they're not going to talk about certain stuff because yeah. it's, it's not that they don't care. It's not that they're not aware. It's just not their lane. Yeah, the same way that the media doesn't talk about how Palestine is being uh, demonetized, demonetized, brutalized <laughs> by leveled, Israel. Shadow shadow I've seen, <laughs> I, I literally seen the most disturbing thing about that yesterday that I wish I hadn't watched. I th- I've been trying to stay away from a lot of the visual media. From Man, it I was, seen it. listen, People don't care no more. That's the thing. People yeah. don't when care. I it's tell you, stuff you shouldn't see. You, you know how sometimes it, it tells you it has the shade over it? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And gives you a pre warning. And you'd be like, I wish I didn't click on that. Sometimes I you probably think. just shouldn't click on that, man. Because I've like, seen some stuff that. Uh, it may, yeah. I wish I had. Again, as a parent, a lot of it is. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still doing. Uh, do you still do classes at Butler? Yeah. I teach my class on Mondays, one, one time, one semester a year. So one semester a yeah. year. Yeah. And it's like a hip hop related. The world of hip hop. So okay. we talk about how hip hop is. Arguably the most globally influential culture, and what my my uh, whole goal for them is to recognize hip hop. Not I don't I don't need them to be heads. I don't I don't need them to argue with people about who's the best. Right. But I want them when they go out into their discipline to recognize that hip hop influences that. You know, so they can engage with people or things and recognize hip hop is present and everything. It's just it's been around so long now. It's just in stuff now. Mm-hmm. So like I was watching Puppy Dog Pals. You know, years ago with my son, which it's a decent show. It's on Disney, but like in the intro, you got somebody scratching. You know, it's a yeah. dog scratching. I mean, like that, yeah. that to me, that's like, it's on Disney. You know, it's a right. little kid show. So we just kind of talk about the influence of it. But we get into all the cornerstones and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And we but, can see stuff like that and yeah. not just assume 
Yeah. There's a black person behind it. It might this just be hip-hop. somebody who grew up with hip hop. Yeah, man. At this point, we so it's, deep into it now. You know, it's culturally relevant yeah. in, in every aspect yeah. of not even just being in the United States or being from the United nah, States. Yeah. Anything, anything you, especially anything cool, you could probably draw a line back to hip hop. We, you know, the Come culture made it cool. You know, clothes. You know, we're back to jazz. Yeah. Like yeah. we were talking about earlier. Or I, I was talking to somebody about um, sampling earlier this week, and it was about Daft Punk. Mm. But like even when you listen to Daft Punk Who was sampling before that now, There's no knock on Daft Punk Because they do a great job It's a different kind mm. But like if it hadn't been for Sampling in hip hop why Daft Punk wouldn't be doing that So even just the way stuff is embedded Like I've seen some commercials sometimes That have like the You know they impeach the president Drum break in them or whatever A funky drummer I'm like and I know it I'm like but that's a hip hop thing that right, Even yeah, now people yeah. are like Let's run an ad campaign And let's get this You know yeah. this loop or whatever Remember when uh, Fred was uh, rapping about He loves Fruity Pebbles in a major way <laughs> I think that might have been one of the first time. It was that or like when Joe Piscopo did the Miller com- Light commercial, or Bartman, where he was like, "Don't yeah, stop Bartman. me now, Do I'm the on Bartman. a roll." Yeah, and yeah. you know what's messed up with that? Do the uh, Bartman with the um, <laughs> Bartman with the Fruity high. Pebbles. Like whenever somebody doesn't really know about hip hop, they use that cadence. It's like a huh, da, 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 yeah. day to day. I love Fruity Pebbles in a major way. Like, 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 remember the Jesus on, Christ dog. is my. Uh, do, 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 remember that do. song? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, disco yeah. rapping. I like disco rapping though. A lot. I like oh, making yeah. fun of disco rapping. Maybe I shouldn't. Ten Job years turkey ago, rapping. a friend of mine <laughs> asked me, that ain't nothing but disco rapping. Disco rapping. rapping. Yeah. No, Job <laughs> turkey. This words I'm about to say. That's when you know somebody. going on there. That's, yes. that's, that's when you know somebody's going to call somebody a, a yeah. Jive Time tuba player. Yeah. Jive Time tuba player. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless you listen to Spoonie G. Now, there Spoonie G was a little different, though. Mm-hmm. Or like the Treacherous 3 record. That's, but anyway, whatever. All right, so uh, let's see what else we got here. Next up on the docket of votes is Master Ace talks about lazy rap fans. <laughs> is the lazy fan partially responsible for today's music climate? Now, I'm going to read a little bit about what... Uh, it kind of sounds the same way we talked about with Exhibit and... For sure. Yachty. What's, yeah. what's, well, let's see, let's see what Ace got to say. So Master Ace has a bone to pick with disgruntled rap fans claiming that those who believe there is a lack of good music in... Uh, uh, in the genre today, should expand their search efforts beyond what is fed to them. Now, this is a Hip Hop DX article um, as well. Uh, during an appearance on Lord Jamar, Rod Diggett, and Godfrey's Yadamine, yeah. God Pass podcast, the former Juice Crew MC was asked for his thoughts about the current state of hip hop and voiced his displeasure with what he sees as a lack of effort from critical listeners. I think we can also tie this into Eric Sermon's comments. Did you guys see Eric Sermon's comments about like, we shouldn't call what's out today hip hop because it's different than what hip hop is? And we'll get there. Well, we're we're, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get the there. kind of stuff. Anyway, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, we'll let's, get there. So, Master Ace says, uh, I think there's good music out there. You got to search for it. You got to make an effort. If you just focus on what's on the radio, then you're going to lose every time. And I think that could be expanded to, you know, anything that's uh, fed through popular algorithms a lot of times as well. Sure. Um, But if you listen to just the radio, I don't know who does, (laughs) then you'll be uh, convinced that there's no good music out there, no good artists out there, that there's actually no good music, blah, 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 blah. It disappoints me how lazy our generation of fans are. He says our. I don't think that he means our because uh, his generation of fans definitely know about him. Yeah. So um, but no, they only um, listen. <laughs> they only listen to what they're being spoon fed. You don't know how many times they run into people and they usually look like us and they say, oh, Master Ace, man, I ain't heard you in a while. What you been up to? Last thing I remember you dropped was me in the biz. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, what? So to that, um, is there any is it any merit to what he's saying there in that in that aspect? I'll let it go around the room. Man. <laughs> so you start off a, a statement with man. I understand where he's coming from. I really do. It's kind of a tired talking point though. It is. And if you're not willing to give that talking point with a point of reference for people to go look for, mm. then you probably should just be quiet, is kind of my opinion on that. And then also like I don't know why this is what I'm saying. Heads, they act like this is new. It's kind of always been like that in some yes. genres. My yeah, dad is always, door. yeah, he's always explained to me, you know, about Funkadelic because my pops is an OG Funkateer. And, you know, his comment was always like, you didn't hear that stuff on the radio. You had to know somebody that knew it. And you might hear it at house parties or whatever. He was like, nobody was playing, you know, Funkadelic records on the radio. It's just when Atomic Dog came Yeah, out. he was like, and that's way after the fact. Mm-hmm. He, so he was saying, he always told me that he was like, if people want to go, People are going to have to look for stuff. So it's always been like that. But if you're not willing to offer an inroad, like if he said that and then say you need to go check out 
uh, this artist. Like if he said sure. you need to go check out Black Milk, or he say you need to go check out uh, Killer Mike, Killer Mike, or you need to insert ra- or no name or whatever. If he was going to say that, then I would. But if it's just going to be complaining about people listening to radio, I mean, okay, it's more so about people not listening to him. Facts. That's what I Ooh. think. A lot of that boils down it to does. with a lot of these older artists is that it's almost like they're hurt that people aren't specifically listening to them because they're not out here searching for artists either. No. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Or the only thing, point, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, on, the only thing that they're listening to is what's on the radio or what somebody tells them is hot. They're not out here holding the flag and carrying it like they're, they're kind of portraying in my personal opinion. Cause like you said, they're not giving you any artists to listen to. No, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they just have this opinion formulated that they don't like what's out and Ugh, I hate it and blah, blah, blah. And, and there's more to this game than this. And y'all need to be listening to this. They're kind of referred to themselves. I'll use this analogy specifically because uh, our friend, Mr. Kinetic is here. Hip hop right now is like an overcrowded elementary school classroom <laughs> where there are some problem children. So, as a teacher, so much of your energy goes into telling this one kid to sit down, this one kid, to, hey, put your put your head on your desk when I ask you to. When it's time for us to go to gym or to art class, get in line and, and be quiet, you be know, quiet. Or, or just like, hey, could you just not disrupt the rest of the class? Like there's 35 kids in the class. There's three that we have to pay. We pay way too much attention to yeah. because I thought about it like as, as, a, as a podcast and what we do, we've already paid way too much attention to somebody like Sexy Red, who's not going to be around in two years. So might be. and and I think that's what Skate. Killer, killer Mike, I'm not Killer Mike, but um, Master Ace, Eric Sermon, you know, when we artists who are of our generation, if you will, when we hear them talk is like they're so focused on the problem kids in the overcrowded classroom that they're not talking we don't talk about the a student we talk we don't talk about the kid that brings an apple to class we don't talk about the kid who you know has perfect attendance because we keep talking about the kid who stands on his desk you know and is always asking to go to the bathroom ain't nobody out here trying to beat joe clark and get to school together (laughs) i mean for analogy's sake yeah You make a really good point. Like, I always think about it from a musician standpoint that when you really deep in your musician bag, you kind of don't care. You know, you just kind of do your own thing. Like, when you go and read old interviews or articles, I'm trying to think of somebody who never really stopped. Like, Ahmad Jamal or like Sonny Rollins or um, Ron Carter. I don't know if you'll be able to find any interviews where they were like, oh, this new jazz, blah, 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 blah. They. They were just doing their own thing and like continually creating. Is, yeah, they didn't care. What, yeah, it's really. And like, why? I don't know. Why do you care? People going to listen to whatever they want to listen to. But I agree with you. Some of it just sound better. And like, you know, I don't know what Eric Sermon said, but like, man, if you want people to go listen to Strictly Business, just tell them that. Yeah. You know? So it's a classic so, record. I mean, just tell people. So like, Eric Sermon, cool. I think that good, good to marry these concepts or ideas together. So Eric Sermon essentially said that, uh, it hip hop is stuck in one place. And if I could just kind of paraphrase everything that he has said, he said, uh, hip hop, the stuff that's out right now is not the hip hop that where it came from. We've heard this argument a bazillion times, but he said, it's not evolving mm. essentially. You know, he's like, you, you, he's evolving. like, you can see the evolve, you know, the evolve, you know, hip hop evolving from this to this, to this, to this, to this. But he's like, well, you can't really see it evolving where it's at now and then that comes into what you just said terry about the devolving conversation which we've kind of talked about a little bit as well i it's not that i necessarily disagree with either of these guys are really sane i think Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like i don't know if it needs to be the conversation that needs to be had because if you're not helping the situation i'm about to say what what records are they putting out for sure like you don't hear nas complaining about this that's that's exactly what i was about to say to to jay moore's point earlier Nas, you can always bring it back to Nas. Nas is cut from that same cloth, from from, from that same era. Jay Z as well. Snoop, Snoop as well. Snoop is is getting it, getting it. You know what I'm saying? Regardless of being the the best MC, Snoop finds a way. You know what I'm saying? Look, if you still listen to Snoop, Snoop is still putting out some great still music. Still putting I out do. good music. Back, back on Death Row had some joints. Back it was on, a joint with yeah. Nas on there. He had two releases great. on Death yeah. Row that was solid. Snoop, one of the most influential entertainers, period. Right. Our artists like him aren't saying this. They don't feel the same way. If anything, they working with artists from that era, you know. Or or trying to or trying to 
Yeah. Not that I can't say trying to stay relevant because sometimes when I hear the trying to stay relevant, it's almost like you still trying it to seem be like cool. an insult sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, people, you know, because you always get that person on TV that that older black anchor when they talk about hip hop is like, you know, I really liked Public Enemy, and. <laughs> I was like, you know, Public Enemy still make records. They still make it. Records. You know, we. I just wish they would go back. I was like, <laughs> look, never man, stop. Look, I, I remember like there was a point where like we got a record from Gangstar, Razzcast, <laughs> and Smith and Wesson within like twelve months, and it was like the people you still claim that you love are still making music. Yeah. It, but you are st- you're too busy complaining about what's on the radio, and it's like, why are you still listening to the radio? And yeah. You're 45 years old. E40 just so, put out a new album last week. E40 <laughs> put out a record called Bands earlier this year, and it's a hater. Mm-hmm. It's got 400 Man. songs on it. It's too, a hater. Right? <laughs> like the that makes me think about so jazz always is like a good point of reference. If you pay attention to it, some of the best people have always put young people in their bands. But it was because they recognized that that was like Art Blakey is a prime example and Herbie and Miles. They always had people in their bands that were like teenagers a lot of times. And it was just because that was the next wave of people that were good and they put them on. And like, you know, so instead of complaining about what people are doing that are new, why don't you work with them? I mean, for sure. But they also coined the term hip. Yeah. Like, you know know, what I'm saying? They wanted to continue to be hip. So they were pulling people in to keep them hip. Yeah. And there was no disrespect to the people they came up with, but everybody, you know, that second great quintet of Miles, everybody came up and then they all split and then mm-hmm. Miles picked new people. That's why like M. Tume was in Miles' band at one yep. point. Marcus Miller was in Miles' mm-hmm. band at one point. I think David Sanborn was in Miles' uh, group at one point. But, you know, all of that was just because these are the next wave. Like if Master Ace has a problem with it or whatever, like. I don't know. Go do a record with Future. I mean, no I don't, record. you know, it, I'm sure that, that's the thing they miss, like by complaining. If Eric Sermon picked up the phone and called, I feel like a lot of people would be like, sure, I'll be on a record with Eric Come Sermon. On, this man. dude from EPMD. Like, right. look, hey, even Snoop, if they don't know a ton Snoop, about it, who's going to turn that down? Snoop extended the olive branch to Wiz Khalifa. And boom. Now, now Wiz Khalifa has in turn returned the favor yeah. right now because, I mean, there's a new crop of people coming up. But but Snoop wasn't like somebody pushing him away. Nah. He's like, man, this is a product of me. Yeah. Why wouldn't I invite him into the fold? And there's you know some what I'm there are some artists out there like we write them off because of their content sometimes. But you don't. I mean, since we already brought her up, you don't know. Sexy Red might she love. Might be able to spit. He, he, he might. She might love Roxanne Chante. She might be. You know, and she or, or like some of these like a lot of times when these artists, they get pushed away from established yeah. artists immediately. And so there's a level of probably bitterness there. But it's like, man, these people are my heroes. I wish yeah. I could tell them how much I love them. Yeah. When they did inspired me. Just make sure you pay them when you yeah. sample them. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> That's that like too. Currency got a record with Babyface Ray. It's called Louis Baggage on Continuous. It was the last record he did with Alchemist. I don't know anything else about <clears throat> Babyface Ray. Ray. yeah. And then when I went and looked at it for a little bit, it he don't sound nothing Detroit, like... right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, he's from Detroit. It don't sound nothing like what I heard him doing on that record. And honestly, I feel like I like his verse more than I like Currency's Currency. verse. Yeah. And Currency been around long enough now that we could probably consider him in that era of bringing he's people an OG. along. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I guess it's weird. Like, yo, if you, if you, if not, like, bring them with you. But then it's almost like, it feel like these cats forgot how they got here. So if Master Ace was in what, Juice Crew? Yep. Like, does he not remember how that all came about? Yes, like, sir. does he not remember Juice Crew and how that all worked? I mean, how they were shunned. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. wasn't like from how the you, establishment. Yeah, yeah, like what is? I don't know. You get old and complain, but honestly, honestly man, what he's yeah. doing is one of my one of my biggest fears about getting older and still being a hip hop fan. I don't ever want to sound like now being around young people helps me not do it. Like I remember hearing about Playboy Cardi before he ever really blew up. Right. Mm. Um, I remember watching the VCR video by Tyler the Creator before it was on YouTube, and he was that was back when they just had a Tumblr or whatever. Yeah. Like. I feel like these older cats, they could just turn around and look and like, let me see what's going on here. But like the argument that there's nothing good going on is such a lie. It's tired because yeah, there's there, there's something going on. Especially when it's like the good only time too. it's like yeah. the only time yeah. that we hear about them a lot of times now. It's like so the only time that yeah. we're hearing about Master Ace and Eric Sermon in the last twelve months is when, is, is when they're complaining about yeah. stuff. Which well, is when they're being the mad records. rapper. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's crazy. Like the first two EPMD records are crazy. Hey, what's the name of the Spotify playlist? Is all the new stuff. I don't support Spotify anymore well whatever wherever you, <laughs> I, wherever you getting it from you know what i mean i guess for me like working in schools uh let's see this is my 16th like year. rap caviar yeah i've been working yeah. in school since 2008 you know one of the things one of the benefits of that is i've always been around young people and so they have always been in a different lane than i have been everybody that ended up blowing up some young kids told me about for it sure. probably before i knew about it and so i just have always been open to like i'll go listen to it 
it doesn't mean I'm gonna go ride around and listen to it, but mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be disrespectful to a new generation. Of I'm gonna hip-hop. give it a chance. I don't yeah. want to be like our parents were. No, too. I don't want to be like that. <clears throat> like, uh, to what we, because yeah. you know, just think about it. There's some people in 1993 who heard Wu Tang Clan. It was like, man, how you gonna have nine people in the rap group? Yeah. But see, you know, you know what's right. crazy though is our parents didn't grow up with rap. So it almost made more sense for them to kind of be like, eh, I don't know if, I, if I'm if i really rocking with that. But there's a generation being, of hip-hop that didn't rock. At a certain point, they're like, man, they don't know how to perform. This yeah, thing. I mean, yeah. but yeah. Us, like they, us being some a group of people that literally came up truly in yeah. Yeah. what can we be like considered the golden age yeah. of hip-hop. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it be surface level. We've seen it pinnacle rise and be where where it is today. True. We saw I it think before we it was should a big deal. Yeah. yeah, I think we should give more grace Absolutely. to what's, what's going on and what's coming up. Because, I mean, regardless of how we feel about the current nature, there's always other places you can go to listen to this. I mean, yeah. we talk about it all the time. We had a blog where it wasn't was just point? it wasn't surface level hip hop. It was a blend of some some kind of surface level, but a lot of it was I mean, it was just good music. It was a so I mean, it, it's on way. you. I mean, everybody has a smartphone. Mm. They can pick it up yeah. and look up. You can almost create a, a playlist off of two artists. Yeah. So if if, if you're stuck in this this uh hole of you're hearing the same monotonous tunes day in and day out. You can pick up two or three artists and create a playlist and be introduced to a whole new wave. Simple as that. If if you go on these kind of rabbit holes of picking up different artists, you're going to find somebody you rock with. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my whole thing with with people in the tired excuse that uh there's nothing new out there and everything sounds the same. It sounds the same if you're listening to the same thing. Speak on it. Or if you're listening to that same radio station. My dad is exactly 30 years older than me. And there's a crazy thing to where if you're of of my ilk and, and came up in hip hop, like by the time people who were one generation behind me and they were still in their 30s because of hip hop, hip hop is the, is the first time where like black people who might have been 35 to 39 became uncool because there was such a shift in culture. You know, because it clearly just was not their music. It wasn't linked to anything that they had mm-hmm. done. And so we're in this it's weird situation to where, like, you know, we talk about Master Ace and uh, Eric Sermon, to where they're still involved in hip hop. They are hip hop, but in a way they feel disconnected from what it is from their own culture because hip hop wasn't my mom and dad's culture at all. You know, well, it here, makes sense. Mine though. either. So yeah. yeah. So so if you're if you're right around me and Terry's age. Mm-hmm. You know, in in your in your early to middle forties, not late forties for me. But sometimes I do feel disconnected. And I have to I have to tap into my youngins and, and like ask them what's what mm-hmm. they're list. I I ask what's going on. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I want to know because I just don't because sometimes, you know, I'll get a request when I'm working and somebody I was like, you made that up. <laughs> you know, when I Man. hear like the titles of these songs and the artists they're what asking you mean, for. There's a, there's a 42 Doug. Where's 41 Doug? Yeah, exactly. I don't yeah, know where the yeah. other Dougs are. Um, <laughs> Lil, Lil Gliz hater. No, but I mean, it really is a thing to where like, you know, just like when I say, yo, yo, shout to Young Fentanyl, like, you know, that could be some real rapper somewhere. Come on, man. But, you know, it really is sometimes where like you feel like, wow, I'm not cool anymore. And it bothers you. There are records I would not, I would, there are records and artists I would have no idea if I didn't work in the environment I did. Yeah. Because I listen, I listen to what I want to listen to. It is not that. Now, there's a lot, none of the stuff I play in my, in my place of business is stuff I listen to in my spare time. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like there is sort of a disconnect because the thing is you you get to a point where you're like, I'm not cool anymore. Yeah. And I'm not cool no, anymore within my own culture, at least when it was my dad and, and my, his friends. Maybe they weren't cool anymore, but it was they, they were not cool anymore mm. outside of the culture. Yeah. You know, they had no choice. You know, what's like, weird? I have a choice because I can still try. I can still try to connect with people who are younger than me and try to at least try to school them and yeah. tell them about things that, that came before this. And it was like, oh, you, the producer that gave you this beat. Let me show you where they gave you this beat from. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. And that, that's, from actually, that's actually uh, something that brings me back to even my relationship with my dad, because listening to Dr. Dre and them gave me it made me dive down that funkadelic hole. Right. So right. when I'm asking him. Can I borrow your Funkadelic, you know what I'm saying, albums and, and get hip to this stuff? That actually, you know what I'm saying, made him happy. Oh, oh here, here you go. You know what I'm saying? He handed them over easy. 
Yeah, and it, it's kind of the same thing with this with us, though. Like, you have to be willing to, if they're listening to something that, that you don't necessarily dig, when, when they find something that they hone in on, you got to provide that to them and kind of lead them down the right path and help them kind of embrace both sides of it. But I kind of want to address this uh yeah, uh, shouts, Jesus shouts to Nate Jesus. He says, uh, it's not just old heads now, though. You got cats like Offset and Lil Yachty commenting on hip hop lagging in sales and quote unquote, what's wrong with hip hop? Hmm. And that kind of goes back to what we were talking about as far as you got to extend that olive branch to these other people. Now, granted, Yachty's probably considered the younger people right now, but he's in a situation now where a lot of people know who Yachty is. Yeah. So. Lil Boat. Exactly. He can do that mm -hmm. in turn, make a change. Offset, absolutely. I mean, it, they argue that, that uh, the, the Migos is one of the biggest hip-hop groups of all time. Now, I, I beg to differ, but with him having that that kind of power or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Tyler does a really he, good job of this. Yes, mm. exactly. Tyler is always commenting, and he's like, man, I found this person on Spotify that had like 20,000 views. But Tyler's, like, is Tyler is, is one of those artists where none of his albums sound the same, though. No. Yeah, he's an artist. He, everything evolves. He's not a product. He's, he's not a product. He's an he, artist. Exactly. Yeah. So these these cats that that uh, Nate Jeezy are talking about, they need to do the same thing. Not not necessarily for themselves if they're not a, an artist like like a Tyler the Creator, but they have the power to reach back. I think we and all do. The, I yeah. think we all do. You know, like no matter like what platform or how big you are, yes, like if you yes. are considered somebody that is an elder. Statesman, statesman of yeah. wherever you're at you you have the look you'd be surprised how many people know you that don't you know like even mm -hmm. locally they'll yeah. be like oh yeah you're oh you're that person yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy it is kind of weird sometimes like yeah you don't like even me and i'm sure you get it too mark it's just like yeah. people come up to you and just be like oh wow okay cool. yeah like I had when no I went, idea yeah, yeah when i went to trees you know it's amazing the amount of cats number one that even kind of know who i am but like yeah. To stand there and have them say stuff like you're a legend or you're an OG or whatever, it, it's kind of like I'm like I didn't really, I, you know, yeah. I don't think about it that way. But I think I I think some of it has to do with with your beliefs about community though, because when you have community, you talk about your elders or whatever. The elders have always been on a different level than that's why they're the elders. But they also, depending on the community, felt a responsibility to to teach you about stuff that has already gone by. So like in my family, my family played bid whist, which is a card game, mm -hmm. and yeah, like, there you go. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? But that's a that is their generation of things. We play space more than anything else. Right. And so when we would get all around each other, they were gonna teach us how to play bid. Now it's been a long time since I run to Boston on anybody. But you know what I'm saying? But they you know, they they taught us that because they felt like it was important for us to know to that. To write a passage. Yeah, and I don't understand like even my dad, like my parents actually did like hip hop and they still do, but my dad was always quick to point out, like, Oh, that's from that, oh that's from that, oh that's from that. Um and then he would be, oh, you need to go listen to that or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, like, my dad was one of the first people to tell me, oh, you need to go listen to a bunch of Donald Byrd stuff. He was mm -hmm. like, some of this stuff. I, that's one of the things I remember. But, you know, I, I think when we're around young people, there's two ways it can go. You can either you can either engage in that old sitting on the porch, falling asleep conversation. And don't nothing come <laughs> out. No, they ain't talking about nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then before yeah. you look up, they over there sleep and they have to kick your rocking chair. Yeah. Or you could be like, okay, that's cool. I'm, a, I'm a, you just a trade. Like, okay. If if y'all want me to be hip to what y'all got going on, come on, sit beside me. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna make sure I show you some stuff too. Mm -hmm. Because I guess like I don't know, like Lil Yachty for example, or any of these dudes, or Tyler. I mean, you could also be like, have you ever heard Cool Keith though? Like, because you get if you want to get into like sure. everybody being different or whatever. Um, there are already there are there are people that the bridge could be built to. I just hope I'm never like that. That just is such an old you know, out of touch way to think about things that, that there's nothing else that could be listened to. And then Lil Yachty, it's interesting. I don't know what he said, but it'd be interesting that he said anything because his last album has well, he said so far from rap. He said hip hop's <clears throat> in a terrible place and everybody's, uh, everybody's too safe. I feel like everybody, every 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 era has yeah. always said that though. The yeah. Jiggy era, they yeah. said that. Uh, shiny suit, you know, the shiny suit era, sure. or the Snap era, they said that. Uh, boom bap era has always. There's always been an era where people are like, well, this is stuck and blah. Yeah, they blah. found a pocket. That's but what every, happens. They find a pocket. You know what? That's what people want to make. So that's, that's what people want to listen to. They're every, just making what people want to listen to. Listen, yeah. every genre goes through this exact same thing. The only thing yeah. about the, that I will say about hip hop, hip hop evolves enough to keep it afloat. Because if you hear about, think about certain eras of music that just are gone. You know what I'm saying? Even from, from our past, like who makes grunge music anymore? 
mm-hmm. in the sense that we remember it. Yeah, not nobody. for real. Nobody, even the grunge artists that are still around, don't make grunge. Who, who even makes like uh like good rock rock and roll music? It's hard. It's hard. To, it's look. It's hard. hard. Yeah. yeah. Because remember, like there was such a, a sh- this was the one of the biggest shifts in music where it went from hair metal to mm-hmm. grunge. Yeah. And M- MTV kind of didn't know what to do because all of a sudden the people they played on yeah. uh, um, 120 minutes became mainstream artists. Yeah. yeah. Poison wasn't gonna work anymore. Yeah. It was you like no, I mean? we don't. It then like Bon Jovi became alternative because yeah. what was on 120 minutes. Shout out to everybody who knows what I'm talking about when I say 120 mm-hmm. yeah, minutes. Throwback. Um, like that's all of a sudden now because REM was around a long time yeah. before Stand and all and Shiny Happy People and, and during the eighties if you didn't watch one hundred and twenty minutes or maybe even like something like Nick Rocks yeah. which was very much a progressive show on Nickelodeon mm-hmm. because they would play hip hop they would play they might be giants when MTV wouldn't get around to it because they were too busy playing winger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you mad about that one. I'm just saying. Put me in the old person. some frustration. <laughs> once, yeah. You can stand once winger. Once again, I'm the oldest of the old heads. I remember these things. Um, I remember. Yeah, yeah, so it was really a thing. And there, when there was this crazy shift <laughs> around 90, 91 where they got away, even from the pop music where all of a sudden, like I remember they did this, this special on MTV about you know what happened to all the new kids on the block fans is like now they like Alice in Chains. <laughs> you know it was crazy. It's yeah. kind of like this more set where like pop shifted towards all those. Um, they were all like really dancey, like 120, 128 that range BPM. I remember listening to Radio Hadaway and like well, you know, Jock all jams, that stuff. Jock almost, jams, basically yeah. stuff. And which a lot Waters. of it, a lot of it was sung by black women, but that's a whole different. Yeah. Hey, but at Millie Vanilli, man, listen. Did you watch the documentary? Yeah, no, no. And then you think about CNC Music Factory. That's a black woman, anyway. Yeah, yeah. But Martha Walsh, shout out to you. Martha yeah. Walsh is great from Two Tons of Fun, which was then became the Weather, the weather Girls. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, when you think like even in that era, there's always been like I don't know. I just when I hear old rappers say this, I'm like, why do y'all? There's just another way you can go about it. All you could say is like, yo, I'm Eric Sermon from EPMD. Let's I'm make some records. One of the most legendary Come duos on, in rap, Listen. honestly, if we're being real about it. Like, and just, I don't know why you don't. And got a nice solo discography. Yeah, pick I wonder, up the phone and call these people and be like, Man, hey. Look, I wonder how much. Nick it, Saban is still out here recruiting for his team. I wonder how much of it is the So I, I need y'all to, to do the same people. thing. As, 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 yeah. as great elite producers, you need to still be out here recruiting but for your team. How, how much of though, how much of this is possibly, and I don't know because I, I didn't watch the whole interview, but how much of this is potentially to the media companies literally asking these particular questions because they know that they're going to get particular types well, of responses yeah. as well. I wish you know these I mean? dudes had more media literacy than that, though, to know. For like, sure. This, like even <laughs> Or even could have had a Joe Budden answer. Man, I don't, you know, I don't listen to that, so I don't know. But this is their time. I just wish that you they would I mean? recognize the opportunity that they have as Eric Sermon is a legitimate cornerstone. Oh, for There's sure. no yeah. argument about yeah. that. I don't understand why it couldn't be like, I hear some stuff and, you know, it's a little different than what I'm used to. But I would love to work with these guys. Yeah. He like, dropped bars on the latest Nas album. I'm saying, if Eric Sermon picked the up one the before. phone, like, yeah. who's going to say no to that? Yeah, nobody. I like, mean, if you, somebody's going to be like, what, you said no to Eric Sermon. Even if somebody yeah. got to tap you, even if somebody got to tap you and be like, that's Bruh. Eric Sermon. All, all, these, Eric all these people got so, managers so what you're and handlers saying, that's, that would tell them what time yeah. it is. Yeah, that's yeah. Eric Sermon. Please listen to my demo. Like, that's. <laughs> just like Three Stack said, he he took his album to Tyler, the creator, and let him check it out. Frank said what he had to say. You just, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like this is, Sorry. I think, I, I really do think some of it comes out of a lack of understanding slash respect slash knowledge of the value of elders in the community. I think that's probably part and how of much it. problem, how, how much power elders have that will soon become ancestors like that. Yes. You, you have a, this is something I've been really thinking about as I've gotten older, because as more and more people die in my family, you have to start thinking about what is the legacy of these people and mm-hmm. what was what was it like when they were there. But while I'm here, you need to spend time with your elders if you got them still living. Come on, Anybody man. that's listening to this, you need to go do that. Yeah. Even if you just sit with them. But this disconnect from that very old indigenous idea of what a community is and why elders are important, I feel like these dudes are missing the boat. Like, you guys are important, and I don't think the young people want to argue with you. I think it's more westernized than anything. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very, it's a very colonial um, capitalist based idea that now that we are separate by generations, I some for some reason I cannot walk with you guys, mm-hmm. and I don't. And and I think the young people they just working with young people they want to be connected to us. They don't want to be at odds with us. They, they you know if they listen to um, what's his name uh, 
any kind of you know, Rye Wave. Yeah, Rye Wave or Airy Linux or anything like that. If they listen to that and you tell them about, I don't know, pick an R and B artist from a different era. Derek a bad dude. Yeah, they they'll listen to it. You know, yeah. they'll listen to it. They they or Roy Ayers or whatever you pick something, they'll listen to it. They're not gonna they're not gonna tell you they right. don't want to hear it. We're more likely to tell them we don't want to hear what they listen to. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I think that goes back to your point about you know you heard Dr. Dre and you asked your dad for your funkadelic records. You know, that's I feel like young people are inquisitive in that way. They want to know more about stuff, mm -hmm. and and they are not. They and we're to, not inquisitive. No, the, our our generation. You, something we're yeah. not inquisitive. We don't even want to try to understand nope. what these kids see in this music. No, nope. you have to. You really have to push yourself to be invested in what young yeah, people. Yeah, because it's are trash, doing. Jay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean that's such, and that is like one of the most lazy responses in the world. Yeah. It's like trash. It is trash. Trashy, shit. and that goes all the way back. Like, to, have you heard? Stay it, off though? my lawn. Yeah, hey, man. That's that's not just like trash. I don't love. I don't love everything Future does, but sometimes I'd be like, yeah, this is kind of cool. Yeah, he, he, he got he, he got a couple flashes in the pan. But sometimes you got to be like, okay, it's they not it it's not for me, sometimes. but I get it. Yeah. See, sometimes you just got to be look. You know, I, there are artists where I'm like, I don't this. I get it. When I, I get it. When I tell people, if I still had two twelves in my car Listen. and was nineteen, <laughs> the same right. stuff that these folks is listening to, I for probably sure. I would have been listening to it too because it would have. But you know what? In the car, you, you know, know what is? And I hate to toot my own horn, but I feel like I was real well rounded with servicing my speakers in my car. Absolutely. Because I would have some three six mafia oh, pan in my geez. playing in my car. I would have some some Dr. Dre, and I would have some Roots banging in my car. You know what I'm saying? Got to go to the got to go to the, got to go to the uh, the big timers and all them for the hi hats. Same. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was that was always man. You but I was like, doing all of it though. Yeah, relatable. Shout out to uh, Naughty Pie, the builder. Yeah, Shout out Danny Dot it brought up uh, Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia. They put up yeah that had J their their collaborative album. And their tour might have one of the my favorite names of all time. Oh uh, yeah, what was it was um Get ready, scaring the hoes. Scaring the hoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was thinking about Thundercast was uh in your girl city. That dude is a clown because he is. when he was here, after every song he was like, Thank you. <laughs> he just go to the next song. Yeah. But Thank it was you. a great time. I am Thundercat. He wouldn't even give you that much. No. Nah. No, no. But it was a great show. I'm thankful for this conversation though, because I hope somebody hears this and realizes, like, you know what? I do need to give that a chance. For sure. Yes. You know? I, I don't think we have these type of conversations yeah. enough. Yeah. You know, I think it's so easy to kind of just get stuck in the yeah. repetition of what everything is. Mm -hmm. And just, it, again, to Master Ace saying that it's lazy rap fans, I think it's also lazy in return to, yeah. to not. Just, you know, and the thing is, it's like. Is there, are they lazy rap fans because they're not listening to your music anymore? Come on, I'm man. telling you, that's what it's about. Come that's on. how I feel. And if it's like that, then just tell just them. Just like, say I put that. a record out. Sitting on Chrome is a great record. Or tell, them about, great. Your, or tell them about your tell new them. record. Talk about disposable yeah. arts. Talk talk about the joints that you do. I yeah. like his stuff with Marco Polo that he was really Yeah, yeah. I like Master Ace. I, no, I'm, I met, a, I'm a Master Ace I fan. met oh. Master Ace at the airport in L.A. Um, I remember you ran into story. him. Yeah, I ran into him in the airport in L.A. Uh, this is back when Bone Thugs East 1999 Eternal came out. Oof, I had my Source magazine with me, right? And I see Mass Ace. I'm like, I need Mass Ace to sign my magazine. He's like, Hey, can you sign Diddy? Can Space? you sign this? <laughs> he was like, Where you want me to sign? He's kind of flipping through it. He had two bad women with him too. He was shout out to Mass he was Ace. doing his thing. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think he's really in this issue. I was like, Just sign the cover. Yeah. It's bone on the cover, so I got a bone <laughs> source magazine, magazine with, with Master, Master Ace. Ace's signature on yeah, it. And you know one thing about Master Ace too is I feel like <clears throat> this is a side kind of a sidebar, but I feel like his style actually works with a lot of newer yes. stuff too. Like Master I, Ace was solid. I like Master Ace. I think and, he's and what's yeah. crazy is him being from the East Coast, he actually translated to the West Coast, yeah. to the West South. Coast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, he knew about that car culture. Yes, how to, yeah. how to make those records sound like this car. I wonder sometimes, as quickly as you could say something bad about these cats, pick up the phone and call them. You Tell could them. probably work with them. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, and, and, not, and not in like no selfish way, just to you know get your own exposure. But mm -hmm. again, going back to the jazz example, those people could have called anybody. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they, Miles, Herbie, uh, Art Blakey, like they are just first call. They could have called anybody. But they call people that weren't really all the way there yet. So like Freddie Hubbard was in Herbie Hancock's band at one point. And like 
but they could have got anybody. Mm-hmm. But I think what they realize is that there's really no good in all of us just continuing to work with each other. Because what happens when we all die? Like, do everything dies with us? Well, it's, like, the, it's, you the, know. it's the power of artist development, yeah. which we've completely lost. Yeah. And yeah, the thing is, uh, all of you have the same managers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You work in the same studio. That's what I'm saying. Just call Just somebody. pick up the phone. You can get, yeah. you know, it's only two uh, degrees of separation to get yeah. somebody's phone number these days. If I find out that Master Ace got a record coming out with uh, Money Bag Yo or something, I'm like that i'm listening to it i don't really care i'll be curious i would Come listen on, to man. it i want to see what's going on here because There's what i would think if master ace think enough of money bag yo to go work with him i, I, I want to check it out i'm, I'm gonna take that cosign and that's Snoop what really makes good at that too that's Absolutely. what makes andre the quintessential person right now because yeah. even though he did this jazz album if you notice every feature that he had coming up when he wasn't doing anything these past twenty I'm years, out like Usher was on an up and coming artist. Sixteen, every single enough. one of them. Well, but everybody's up and coming when you're Andre three thousand. This uh, is true. This is awesome I mean, that. but they were young. But he artists. didn't need to be on the Unk record. <laughs> he I told, did, he, he was didn't on need Rich to be on Boy's remix album. for uh, yeah. Throw Some D's. Throw like, some D's. He did not need to be on those records That's at true. all. Hell, he was on a record with with uh, Frank Ocean. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Channel Orange. Yeah. Come on, man. It's it's like he's constantly been doing him and embracing the youth at the same time. This is how I know Andre got some raps coming. Look at the names of those songs. <laughs> I really wanted to put a rap album out, but this is whatever it was. This is what way the wind blew. Look, look, look at them yeah, song yeah. titles. And he got, he anybody, got some raps. He got and, some raps somewhere. He just don't want to tell us about them yet. You're saying anybody that's been a musician or is a musician, like you can relate to being like, this is just where I'm at right now. Hey. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I tell. Right one of the things that I reflected on, I made a little video about this. Is like I've been in the position to where, like, I've I've got so many raps out. Like I haven't written a rap since like twenty twenty, and I got to a point, and I've had conversations with people that have my age that have rapped as well. It's like I don't. I've got so many things out there where I'm just talking about random stuff. Like there's only so much you can talk about unless you're inspired to talk about something. Exactly. And I kind of made the determination. I was like, you know what? There are so many other ways that my energy can be used to bring things up and and build rather than just make another rap song about some random stuff, Mm -hmm. unless I'm inspired to make something that I feel like I want to do. And that's just kind of, so when people are like criticizing Andre for that aspect, I'm like, you just don't know. You don't get it. You just don't know. Cause I haven't, man, that's good to hear from someone else. I think I haven't put anything out this year. But I also don't have really much that I would put out that would be rap. But it's been taken. It's been a lot to be okay with that. Yeah. Mm. No. Absolutely. You know it's, I mean, it's hard. Now, if I if I get my pen out though, then it's I, there. I mean, yeah, then it's I'm, there. I'm gonna out rap somebody. See, so see, it's, see, not, see, I mean, it's not about that. And it's the thing. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing. Like I yeah. feel better as a writer yeah. and as an MC than I've ever felt. But I just don't feel like I need to add that noise right now. No, but I either. also feel the same way you just said. If yeah. I need to. I can be that's like with 3000 and they better leave him alone <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, if he gets started the bear. you they get started the what are you gonna do with it if he yeah. if he gets it kind of reminds me of when Jay-Z said he was gonna retire and then we kind of would hear sprinkles there like he did the Deer Summer record I remember that mm-hmm. and I was kind of like oh dang I didn't know he was still rapping or even when he was on Speaker Box it was kind of yes. like Black Album came out the same year or whatever but mm-hmm. I remember thinking like I guess this man he and then Wayne kind of blew up after that because mm-hmm. we just opened that lane up but then once Jay-Z started rapping again you I mean, know, he was right. Remember Wayne hit him I with mean, the he was right best rapper there. alive since, since the best rapper retired. retired. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then I love Jay-Z that though. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But I, I love the fact that he gave him his props. Though. Yeah. I guess. I, yeah. I mean, I mean I, it's good to know that <laughs> I think me. a lot of musicians understand <laughs> where Andre is coming from. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But like, I need. I, it's not going to happen. But I know how fans can be. Sometimes they want you to do what they want you to do. Come on, man. But you can't make. I mean, he can't make the same album over and over again. Listen, he could, but like, who wants to do that? Andre is it sucks. In my it takes five. away the whole point of doing music. Of doing in the first a record. Place. Snoop is a perfect example. That yes. man has not put out the same album twice. Oh, I mean, well, when he came out with the uh, what was the joint, the gospel album? Yeah, yeah. Snoop had enough pull that was to actually, get the Clark sisters to put a record. Because I was album, like, man. okay, Snoop, come it could have won. That one could have won a he Grammy. So though. Much, it yeah. should have won a Grammy. Yeah. Yeah. Music I, was on it. There's look, some. There's some. If you like gospel, there's some records on. Like if you if you want to if you ask me which one do I want like better, the Kanye gospel album or the Snoop album? Snoop album. It's Snoop album all day long. Yes, he smokes that. I yeah, always easily. go back, and I know you, because you mentioned it earlier, but the Seven Days of Funk with Dame Funk yes. came out of left field with the master of modern hip, you know, funk music in Dame Funk. And yes. I was like, I, I felt, I don't want to say proud, 
But I but I felt super happy that Snoop went and worked with Dame Funk for a whole EP. I was like, yeah. this is amazing. I mean, because yeah. he hasn't even done that with Battle Cat. Mm. And he could. He could. Yeah. But like I remember hearing the first news that that was coming out. I'm like, wait, what? I was I, I more was, excited if Dame. Fit. I'm like, how did Dame pull that off? I was, exactly, Man, exactly. I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that Snoop even looked at it like that, I Snoop is a great example of how to not be like that. Absolutely. One hundred percent. He's the model. Shout yeah. out to Snoop. But uh yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Mark, Mr. Kinetic, for coming on. Yeah, it's, man, it's, good, to be, it's good to be here with y'all, man. I've known y'all for you know, a long only, time. It only took man. us absolutely three hundred and sixty seven uh, episodes. No, to get it's you. fine though. No, I ain't no ain't no ain't no issue there. It's yeah. just cool to be in the room with y'all and just knowing y'all for a long time. Appreciate long, you. Long, long time. Going back to uh, front page. Yeah. Man. And I remember when Sean and I got started. Uh, did people know your name is Sean on here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Out here using <laughs> you know I don't know. We got, I think we probably entered the scene About the ish around same the same time. time. So, yeah, yeah. like when I said smooth endoplasmic reticulum, yeah. like that's SER. That's what that, I love that record, but that's like 2009, something like that. Yeah, that's a record that I actually yeah. did with Tall Black Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you were the first person to ever tell me, tell me about Tall Black yeah, Guy. Yeah, so yeah. So I know I'm, that. I'm, you know. I, yeah. I, 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 well, I did with him. I, I, said this. I, I did the song and I sent it to him and I was like, hey, is this cool if I put it out? And he was like, yeah, I like it. I was like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've said this on stage at the various places and I'll be like, how much I love the Frozen Liquor record. Yeah. And that you, I thought you, that I knew that was what you were getting ready to say. And, and like you had a verse on there and like it was oh, just yeah. like, I was like hearing my friends yeah. do yeah. like some really dope yeah. stuff. Beats and Breakfast was another one. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Zoot was on Frozen Liquor, right? Yeah. But it was also, yeah. Yeah. but it was a, but that was a Beats and Breakfast, that's a yeah. Beats and breakfast yeah. record. That I remember coming to the house to do that, man. We ate breakfast and yeah. uh, that was a good made time. a beat on accident and then rapped. Yeah, it's still, hey, the whole video is still on the internet. Yeah, I remember you were watching, it was a kung fu movie. It was called Red Cliff. I remember that was that was how that made it into the record. I don't even, man. I don't even remember. Yeah, but. see, I remember that was the booth. It was in the living room. Yeah. I remember all of that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember all of that. I mean, I don't remember what we were watching, but yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember in one yeah. of the videos. That's how I met Jay. I think it's through through y'all. Y'all played a video yeah. game on PlayStation Three called Fat Princess. Yeah, I just watched that video. So I've been redo. Why? I've been putting my YouTube <laughs> account back together. Oh, work. Like like organizing it, and I so I ran across some of the old Beats and Breakfast stuff, and there's literally it's literally season one, episode six. Yeah. I don't know why I know that. But that's, that's why I actually yeah. I don't know but, why but that stuck but, out to but me. They that were you were playing, playing that game. But they were playing Fat Prince. It was Ace on the couch with yeah. my brother and Tony Sticks was there. Blake Blake Ali was there. Oh man. The uh crew. Skits, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, yeah, they were playing Fat Princess. I love thinking about that, man. That's, I guess, when people call us OGs or whatever, or legends, I guess that's why. I mean, it's I from back at that era. Yeah. Well, that I, era. you know, I was talking to somebody, um, I'm a dude who's in Echo Maker. I can't remember his name. Eric Brown. Yeah. And then it was the other guy who was in Echo Maker. I can't Corey. Remember, I think. Corey. And we were talking about, you know. Lorax. Yeah. yeah with the, the Red Bus, Lorax, mm. Legiro, all Yo, those yeah, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeti One. Yeti. Yeah. Um, I just saw, or I just talked to Yeti. He had his yeah, art at Butter. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Lewis? Rest in peace to yeah. my guy, man. Jason. Yeah. Dude. He bought my NPC. Yeah. We were talking about mm. how, like, locals only. Not to be that guy, but a lot of what we were doing at Locals Only in the mail, <clears throat> man, a lot of these cats, they benefited from it. They don't really realize oh, it. For sure. oh, and, yeah. it's, and it's just distance from it. Again, not to be an angry old person. Mm -hmm. I just, will, when they see me, I'll just talk to them and be like, man, back in the day, da, 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 da. And they're like, oh, for real? And then I talk to them about how we could never get a show in Fountain Square. Yep. Yep. And then like things changed. But I'm like, there's building blocks that went on to that. Mm -hmm. And talking about Russ and Mud Kids and Absolutely. Twilight Sentinels and all the different people that put stuff together for us. We mm -hmm. have kind of, we're like elders. Patio. Yeah. In a way. Yeah, Yo, patio. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, you think about it when you go to stuff like Tree Scene, I look at the bill. I don't know a lot of these cats at all, but it doesn't matter. You yeah, know, for sure. I just look at it. It's an extension of like, man, it's cool that this is what it turned into after all those That's little smoky bar sure. nights. Listen, man. Uh, making Back maybe when, $25 and splitting it with the come homies. On. I remember buying a cheeseburger on the way home. I remember when we used to be like, we wish we had somewhere other than locals yeah. only to go to. Because we had nothing else. But Is locals that, only was so clutch. They held it, it was so Shout clutch. Out to Dave and Kevin, Shout out to Dave, man. And, and, and listen, yeah. Dave's and on his food, fifth business since then. Come on, the food there Shout was out to solid. Exactly. Man. Yeah, it was. Breakfast yeah. on Sundays was crazy. Yeah. Sure was. It was a Bears bar, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Go on there and watch the game. I was yeah. a Bear. I've yeah. always been a Bears fan, so that's. Yeah. Shout out to the dude. I forget his name. He kind of did the sound. You know, oh was, my God! I got beef with him. Yeah, you had to know how to do your own sound because he wasn't gonna do nothing but set we up. We called like, him Ponytail. Guy. Yeah, Ponytail. Man. <laughs> and then there's Rob. Rob was always, uh, I was like yeah, Rob too. Yeah. But, but I, Corey yeah. did the door. Corey, yeah, man. That's Corey. I always uh, had the, yeah. uh, Corey, the the ring yeah. game right there in front. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Was it foosball
wow. Nicole Kearney. And like now she yeah. is a winemaker and like yeah. uh, literally through my business, like she, I, now she's one of my vendors and like we support each other in that way. But we met at Locals Only. That's yeah. crazy. Look, my, my brother and his wife met at Locals Only at a cut camp show. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Cut camp. That yeah. got introduced by Scoot Dubs. Yeah. Wow. Because she worked with Scoot. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Ain't that. And Scoot's in town and I, I, I got to go to coaches. <laughs> I got to go. To oh, yeah. I'm definitely about to follow up in there. I got to go I see the people. Yeah. I, I don't have to work tomorrow. So that's about it. to make me feel bad. Hey, we'll, 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 I mean, we'll be in there for you. Take care of that business, man. Yeah, you we, gotta do what we you gonna gotta be do. a positive influence on you tonight. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, say, I haven't no, been to coaches can't. in over a year. Yeah. I just went last so, week. But yeah. Oh, okay. I just uh, well, I guess yeah. I went in May. But I'm I'm glad to to kind of go down that lane, though. I mean, hey. it's yeah. Well, I mean, you were very yeah. accurate. Like you, yeah. like Heath Jones, Mister Kinetic. Yeah. Oreo Those Jones entities. was around there at the same time. Yeah, Oreo Jones was very yeah. much the same. Blake, like yeah. we all came up in that same. Proforms kind of got launched yeah. at the same time. Like we are of Shout that DJ particular DJ era. Spools. DJ yeah, Spools. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ace One, man, wherever you at, Ace, I love you. I was, like I said, I always <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, whenever I don't care yeah, when east I see Ace, I'd be like, man, don't join no more bands. Yeah, that's <laughs> East Side, man, far East Side, right there. Absolutely. Yeah, he I, went to Arlington. It's it's yeah. interesting too that era. Like it was a very compact, like three or four years. But it seems like it lasted. I don't know. It seems like a lot longer than it was. It, it especially, definitely seems longer. Especially when you consider like COVID was like a year, yeah. two years, and it's been twenty twenty was my like wife four and years I talk ago. about that all the time, man. So. Them little, them little shows. Just hoping what forty or fifty people would show yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? That was a good night. So I'm like, yeah, man. Shout out to all the wives and girlfriends that put up. With oh <laughs> man, her hair smelling like smoke. Your yeah, smelling man. like smoke. Man. She, because she, back yeah, then, she held like, it down going in that stuff. I, that's, how, that's how I know your wife. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how she know a lot of y'all <laughs> yeah. just from calling. Yeah, just Sean yeah. and uh, Clarence. That's what she yeah. would call you and uh, yeah, you and um, Grits. Like, and Grits. Yeah. yeah, I don't even think about it as Grits no more. Um, but then that's how I, that's how I met Major Seventh. That's how I met yeah. him. That's how I met uh, Slot A. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Slotty Divock. Yeah, man. It's just Remember a we lot. did the homie show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. came to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's light in here. It's, what is it? It's bright in here, but it's light in here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That <laughs> was, hey, when man. Nick, yeah, Nick came down. Hey, oh, my low key, God. That was one of the greatest shows that nobody came to. Yeah, uh, yeah we were playing all kinds of stuff. Add Two was there. Add Two was there. Add Two. Was Nick there, too? Nick was there. Add Two, Nick, Slot A, us. I mean, remember we had all the homies from St. Louis come through? Yeah. And that was at Locals Only. Just happened yeah. to be Monday night football and like yeah. nobody came. Yeah, that was a good time. Though. Yeah, it was a good Black night. Black Space slept on my couch. <laughs> yeah. You remember seeing AZ at, local, at Locals? Hey, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So AZ, man, he was on it. I don't know how that happened, but he was still really, really good at rapping. That's one thing yeah. I remember. His flow was impeccable. Uh, I, I like, uh, I saw an interview with him yeah. recently. He's just, he's a super humble dude. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad for all of that. I feel even this, you know, had it not been for that, you know, and then going into bringing down the band. Yeah, and then you know now all of this, the evolution, all of that. Uh, like I don't, but I don't. Again, not to be that old guy to try to rub it in people's face, but like you know, it existed. It's just some of that I get from Russell. He never made me feel like like I wasn't worthy mm -hmm. um, to be in that room. Russ really brought you brought you in hundred percent. Yep, and you know didn't I mean? have to. Yeah, yeah. All because I rapped over, I looped a record similar to what you did. I looped the record that there was just enough open space. I rapped over it, sent it to him. He said that was cool, sent me the instrumental back, and we've been down ever since. Hey, that's it was, that's what's up. It was 2008. Yeah. That's Probably. all it took. He, he knew my roommate, so that was how that happened. Oh, okay. So. Was that Eric? Yep, Eric okay. Romer. Shout, yeah. to Eric, Shout yeah. out to Eric Romer, Big yeah. Rome. That's my guy. <laughs> but then because of that, that's how I met Jason, who some people know as Alpha Live. That's yeah. how I met him. Yep. That's how I met Tornado Nick. Alley. Yep, that's how I met Jay. That's how I met all this. That's how I met Gray. That's how I met Jay Brookins. You yeah, know, everybody. Like just from, yeah. yep, just crossing paths with each other. But everybody got a locals only story, though. Yeah. Yes. So, oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Man, I'm no, I'm happy to, happy to reminisce with you, man. Good time. Yeah. I wish the building, the building ain't even really there no more. Man. Yeah, it's, it's there, but it ain't. Yeah, it's a relic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not. Fifty sixth and Keystone. Man, I pass it basically every yeah. day. Right down, the, right around the corner from Mousetrap. That was another weird feature yeah. of it. Is we would be over there doing that, and the Mousetrap was doing something totally different. Totally Completely different. different. Um, they was not having hip hop back then. Nah, not back then. Nope. They didn't need to. They didn't need no, to. Didn't, it, was, yeah. it was jam band and electro music and people doing. Uh, psychedelics, man. Was Whatever. Like, playing <laughs> pool. Man, playing pool and eating them wings. Look, I, I just know. They had a great sound system. They did. I, still I do. Still one. Yep. Shout out to yeah. everybody Everybody that plays pool and you got to put quarters in the pool. Table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. You got to stack your quarters on the edge yeah, so exactly. people know you got next. next. Yeah. <laughs>
It well, old on, as hell. Think about it. <laughs> on that note, we're we're it's already eleven twenty, so we gotta get to, we gotta get out. Jay's gotta get to work. Yeah, buddy. And uh, so but, that's uh, why you be late sometimes when I'm DJing the coaches. Oh yeah, yeah, because I'm coming straight from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. If you're still here, I appreciate you again, Mark, for coming on. Right. Great to talk with you. And yeah. uh, for the new old heads, Major Seventh will be back next week unless he still got got them. Uh, the Luther. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <Stop. laughs> but uh yeah. Uh, we'll see y'all next week. Uh peace and uh peace yeah, love and all that good stuff. And all that. Yep. Yeah. Peace. Yep. In a minute.